welcome to the Opie and Anthony program on XM Satellite Radio. Do you have your headphones on backwards? Yeah. Backwards. And that fucks me up bad, so I had to switch it real fast. Good morning, Bill Burr. Yeah, I made it. BillBurr.com, everyone. Helping us out big time. Absolutely. I got a lot of shit yesterday on the internet about coming here late. Did really? you? <laughs> Why? Yeah. Fans are a little yes. pissy, aren't they? Oh, no, that was all funny shit. Set your alarm, jackass. <laughs> <laughs> it was just funny because we were talking love. about it. It was tough love. Tough love. They That's just right. want you here on time. It, it just made it funnier because we were talking about it the day before. <laughs> so pathetic. And then the first chance you have to be late, you were late. Dude, that's like going, you know, my car's been running great lately. <laughs> right, exactly. And next <laughs> day. engine falls off. <laughs> <Right. laughs> I am like, I am one of those people, uh, the jinx thing. To me, is just law. It's not a. It's not something that might happen or. Die. It is fucking law. You can't say shit. You can't say my car's running great or man, my driving record. I haven't been in an accident in so long or yeah. any any shit like that. The jets look good this year. Yeah, uh, well, there you go. Let's go down. There's Vinny, friggin' <laughs> defensive test dummy. <laughs> he's 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 a mess. That's what it is though. You can't say. Anything. Hey, I, 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 I don't like that you said that Vinny's a mess. Why? He's doing pretty well, considering. Considering. Yeah, he had a pretty good day Sunday. Yeah, but that whole statement dies with considering. <laughs> considering. <laughs> it got sacked five times. It's not his fault, really. Considering he's pushing fifty. Yeah. That's right. Considering. And he's still breathing. Yeah, That's I think he's, right. He's doing a hell of a job. How many turnovers? I don't know. He got sacked what five times? Five or times. He had a couple of the, the Vinny. Uh, but he, he hung in there. I'm telling you, he wasn't bad at all. Dude, can you imagine? Playing We're in a tough spot, the Jets this year. So Monday night break. football, the Jets. I guess next week. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, but can you imagine playing tackle football at fucking 32? No, Forget no. about 40. Look at happen to Bob. My, I hurt my knee, man. I broke my knee, yeah, man. Exactly. You know, that's what happens when you enter your 30s and try to play with the big boys. He's close to what 42. Yeah. Starting quarterback for the New York Jets. Hey, Wes, what's up? What's up, man? I wanted to wish y'all happy Shoes Day. Oh, that's right. It's Shoes Day. It is indeed <laughs> Shoes Day, according to what? The big G? G what is that? I, G Rock? I forgot what? their names already. E Rock? What? I don't know. No fucking clue, man. I can't hear you. They're mumbling behind uh, the G Rock radio, right? Lindsay and Lindsay. Lindsay and Lambert. Yeah. G Rock G Rock Radio. G Rock Radio does shoes day. Happy shoes day. And they give away a hundred dollars uh, worth of shoes on shoes day, which is like one like Tuesday. Yeah, I know. How much how many fucking stride right? <laughs> Don't they have <laughs> pay less? Some canvas wingtips that you can <laughs> washable. <laughs> Don't they have like a purse Thursday? That's or? Thursday. Oh, but it's not purse Thursday. What is it it's again? just called purse day. Purse day. Because it sounds like purse day. Thursday. Jimmy wanted to make Monday punt day. Hold on. Now we're mixing up all our uh, our morning shows. G Rock Radio is the the couple Brian and Jen that were sleeping on the bed. Yeah, I thought one of their features for the station itself is. Shoes Day. No, that was the other wacky morning show. It is. Yes. That Jeez. was the Lindsay and Lampert or Lampert and Lindsay or... Oh, right. The one that did the kitten in the basket The kitten gag. in the basket, yes. No. yes. Our, when you our know, mistake. You, you got to bump up the comedy when you have Shoes Day. Shoes Day. This will get them. You think? And you know they're like, Happy Shoes Day! Happy Shoes Day, everybody! Let me tell you a little bit about Shoes Day. We're going to be giving away free shoes. I Ugh. don't want to work. I just want to walk on my shoes all day. All Shoes Day. You know what that means, people. <laughs> right, I'm sure they have all these wacky dumb We're giving away another pocket. pair of flip-flops at top of the hour. When right. you hear the phrase that pays... <laughs> the phrase that pays. The PD that came up with that one needs the Charlie Rocket method of suicide. And, and Get out in the field and slit your throat. And we know these radio guys, they do these dumb things like this, and then they sit in their office waiting for the big phone to ring for their big shot at New York City radio. New York City calling. We have to be getting a call. We're doing the, the, I'm finally getting out of the Quad Cities. We're doing the what? The the... The phrase that pays. Yeah, and, and now they're in their office. I'm just <laughs> waiting and waiting and waiting. Nothing happens. Let's say hi to Mike in New Orleans. Mike, what's going on? Oh, man, here in New Orleans, we got some wacky days. We have no underwear Wednesdays. 
And then tomorrow will be Thong Thursday. Thong Thursday. And Free Beer Friday follows that one. I smell the beginning of a bit. See how, the, <laughs> see how this bit is just kind of developing in front of our eyes? Coagulate. That's the beauty of the Open oh, yeah. Anthony show. I think we came up with the best one ever. Whip them out Wednesday. Yeah. I mean, how do, how do you go wrong with the middle of the week, girls showing you their tits? No underwear Tuesday. I mean, who gets to actually see that? It's a little wordy, and yeah, who's going to see it? Who's going to see that? You can do uh, Secretary under the desk, maybe. We got it. Pussy out the window. <laughs> Hold your pussy out cruise, the window. Cruise control. <laughs> pussy kiss. Pussy out the window Mondays. <laughs> That's a driving hazard, if you ask me. Well, we'll see if uh, others call in with their wacky morning show and what they call days of the week. There's, right. There's the famous two for Tuesday. Two for Tuesday is a staple here in New York, isn't um, it? And is there any others? Purse day. Three for Thursday. Shoes day. Do they do a three for yeah. Thursday in places? They do a three for Thursday. A three for. Isn't that great when the first song of a three for comes on and it's a band you hate? Yeah. 38 a... special, three for coming up. Wham! You're so gone from that station for such a long period of time. Because now you know, yeah, you got to hear You're just it. stuck there. Right, there's 20 minutes, i got to go somewhere else. I've done that where I've, I've put uh, the Q104 station here in New York. They do classic rock. And uh, it's a song, you know, something I hate, of course, and I'll use the example Bruce, you know, and he's t the end of his song. <laughs> so, you know, the end's coming up. <laughs> it fades out, and I'm like, oh, cool, Bruce is done. Yeah. Maybe something good will come on. And then it's just like, <laughs> well, I took my Chevy to the... Oh, <laughs> no. no. And then you realize, oh, it's fucking Tuesday. Another 18 minutes of this ass fuck. <laughs> I did four plays. Back in my... Uh, four play? My rock radio days. That There isn't even a reason for a four that play. That was one of those fine weekend promotions. And it was always, the fourth cut is always live on a four-play weekend. Uh, <laughs> and then you hear, like, live Zeppelin or something. <laughs> it was the worst. That's great. The that must have taken forever with, like, oh, yeah. Leonard Skinner. I was going to say, something. you get into some Leonard Skinner and you do Freebird Live. Or Allman Brothers. Right, I'll see you a Monday, four everybody. play from the Almonds, and the last one's live, and it's in memory of Elizabeth Reed <laughs> or something. It just goes on for <laughs> fucking it's got 45 minutes. got the drum minutes. solo. Yeah, drum solo included. The guitar jam. <laughs> Which truck's going crazy on that one? <laughs> That's pretty much the jock just either really has to take a dump or he's got some scab listener coming down and do some fucking... By the way, we're forgetting a very obvious one right now. It yeah. is Rocktober. Rocktober. It is That's Rocktober. a whole month of enjoyment right there. Because, Rocktober, uh, everybody. All right, let's say hi to Eric in New Jersey. Eric. Hey, what's Happy the... birthday, Bill. Thank uh, you. How about... Molest a minor Monday. Oof. Molest a minor Monday. We're actually today we're uh, looking for the real ones because the real ones are are worse than anything we could come up with. Yeah. Okay. Let's say hi to Joe in Jersey. Joe, what's up? Yo, this is Hot ninety seven. It's Sucker Free Sunday. Punching out. What's Sucker Free Sunday? No bad uh, <laughs> rappers. Oh really? Ninety three uh, three in Philly, I guess. Has a Hawaiian shirt Friday. So I guess you know. You wear your Hawaiian shirt. And what? You're getting crazy. That's just crazy, yeah. The weekend's coming. It's, you know, you're going to work and you're supposed to wear maybe a suit or at least be casual, you know, but look good still. Uh, if you're wearing that Hawaiian shirt, you're crazy. Yeah. You've blown off all the rules. You, you listen to that station and go, yeah, I'm going to be wild it's like obvious. them. You're dressing like Robin Williams. You got to be <laughs> oh, wacky. <laughs> look, I'm wearing my Hawaiian shirt. What? Oh, he's so hysterical. <laughs> Everything he says. <laughs> that stream of consciousness. He's so quick. Uh, he's with his 58 water bottles from his last special. <laughs> <laughs> he just dumped them all over him and drowned them. Big Sasquatch hair growing off every inch of him. Sweating like a pig. I know. He's taking hair plugs off his <laughs> chest. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is a great one. Patrick in uh, Illinois. Patrick. Yeah. What's That's up? That's when we got uh, was it mandatory Metallica Mondays. Yeah, mandatory and, Metallica. Mandatory. Yeah. Like, that's that's a little frightening because it's, it's mandatory. I actually had to you do some mandatory Metallica when I was working in uh, Buffalo. Yeah. 
How, then, did, how did you play it? Like the bosses didn't want to hear it because it was too loud? Nah, man. There, it was all about... The, we were the rebel rock station in Buffalo, so of course we had to do mandatory Metallica every night at 8 o'clock. Yeah. Three in a row for Metallica. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was better than row. getting the lead out. Yeah, that somebody's was, also mentioning the get the lead out. Get the lead out was a staple in rock radio for many years. I'm sure there's stations still doing it out there. They always played Misty Mountain Hop. You wanted to kill yourself. All right, so we were trying to... Show that we are cooler than the station that was doing uh, Get the Let Out, so we had mandatory Metallica. I used what to love the, Led Zeppelin uh, until I listened to the radio. Yeah, you ju it just classic get rock just burned the shit burned out, out every, every one of their every songs. one of their songs, except for the ones that like really stink. <laughs> The ones Zeppelin song Boogie with, with stew. No one <laughs> hot dog <laughs> that no one ever listens to anyway. You just but every single Le Led Zeppelin song. I mean, can you actually sit there, doom, 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 and and go ooh and turn it up? No, gone. Just, I am off the station. Just shows you that pro, uh, program directors just never took chances whatsoever, especially with Zeppelin. Zeppelin's catalog, you could play almost any song on the radio and it would be cool, but yeah. they still only played like ten. That they was only it. Played like and 10. they still do, and you don't want to hear them now. That's it. Let's say hi to Matt in Virginia. Matt? Good morning, boys. Good morning, Matt. Down here in Virginia, the little Top 40, Top 40 station on St. Patrick's Day makes it St. Panties Day. Ah, because it's, it's uh, girls' underwear. St. Panties yeah. Day. Well, that's that's cute. Yeah, it sucks. Exactly. What is the one with the <laughs> traffic? Oh, the traffic jam. They do the 5 o'clock traffic jam yeah, or something? Yeah, because you're stuck in traffic. It's so the traffic need, jam you're in. So you need a long uh, jam of music. And they're going to jam out some music. I remember a bad one when I, used to, I used to, uh, was working uh, up in Massachusetts. They used to have some local strip club would advertise on this radio station. And it was uh, on Friday, it was Legs and Eggs. You, you were supposed to oh, go yeah. to a strip club for <laughs> yeah. breakfast. And the oh. funniest thing was, was they used to whisper the commercial. Like your wife might be sitting next to you. Oh, is that why the whisper? That like, makes sense. Hey, guys, come down. It's, it's Legs and Eggs Day down at fucking the Dirty Snatch. <laughs> <laughs> Who the fuck would ever eat at a strip club? Ever. I, 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 yeah. You got to drink alcohol because it's kind of like... Yeah, at least there's alcohol yeah, in it. Yeah, there's alcohol in it, kind of stero making it yeah, sterile, but cleans up all the germs we, we, there. We used to go to uh, the strip clubs on Long Island all the time uh, when I was working for a living. And uh, any time the stripper, and this was back in the good old days where for a buck, you know, she's coming up to you and just grinding in front of you on the bar and costs you a dollar, you know. But you'd have to, like, you didn't want to insult her, really. But as she came over, you slowly took your beer off the bar and started drinking it and held it in your hand because I didn't want her standing over my beer oh, yeah. for fear of what was falling in it. And then it would be, uh, <laughs> you know, like like happy hour or something. They'd bring in <coughs> the big heroes, the big uh, oh, that's right. five foot or yeah, eight yeah. foot hero, put it down, and all these guys would be like, "Hey, the food's here. You gonna <laughs> grab some?" You go and I would sit and look and go, "No, I'm not grabbing food here." I won't even eat at Hooters. It's just the, the no, whole thing. No, it's it, like I want the focus to be the food, the food, not the broads, the whores. Yeah, the he was. He was. Hey, you, you want me to grab your sandwich? <laughs> no, shut up. I don't want big a nasty, sandwich. Big nasty twat in your face. You guys want to get potato yeah. sticks? <laughs> what do you got? They got some great potato salad over there. It's the uh, <laughs> mozzarella sticks, anybody? The German right. potato salad. They no. leave the skins on. <laughs> I'll eat after I get out of this joint. Thank no. you very much. No food. I like how you described the specials to me, but no. Right. Let's say hi to Ram in Toronto. Ram, what's up? Morning, bu -bu -bu boys. XM Canada coming soon. I'm waiting for it. Uh, there is a game they used to play up here called What's That in Your Mouth? What's That in Your Mouth? And, and it, it was basically, it would be like a food, and you have to like try and guess what food it was. It's like, you're, you're, you're thinking cocks, and, you know, who's that in your mouth is how we used to rename it. Who's that in your mouth? Uh, and I bet you there's a lot of double entendre going on. Oh, yeah. Not in that station. Because I'm sure you had the whole, uh, that was part of the show, like eating a banana. There's another one they used to do was phone booth theater. You have to run around a phone booth around the city and read a script, and it was gay. Uh, and that's an old uh, hack radio bit. A no, lot we'll of stations have done that one. A lot. All right, punch up, boys. All right, thank is you. There, sir. Is, are there any stations that really do celebrate September with Zeppelin? 
Are you kidding me? September. Someone's uh, instant uh, feedbacking me and saying yes. Let's say hi to... A whole month of songs you've heard at least 2,000 times <laughs> oh. each. <laughs> There's no way you want to hear that shit again. Let's say hi to Walter the Trucker. Walter! Hey, what's going on? Hey, man. Hey, look, we have, I got three fast things. Thirsty Thursday, mm -hmm. 9 o'clock, I do Jones for the Stones, and then Breakfast with the Beatles on Sunday morning. What was it, Sunday morning? Breakfast with the Beatles. Breakfast, oh, with yeah, the Beatles. breakfast with the Beatles. That's a big one too. Breakfast Talk to you now. Have Beatles. a good day, man. All right. Well, they play a, like a half hour hour of uh, Beatles music as you're reading the the paper right. and having coffee. That's the one. Tom in Dallas, what's up? Hey, what's up? Hey, what's up, guys? Hey. Yeah, here in uh, here in uh, Dallas, the uh, classic rock station, Bo and Jim, has Weird Ass Wednesday, where they read uh, tabloid stories and the Disco Friday Freakazoid. Which uh, their sports guy puts on a feather bone and dances to a disco tune, and the callers have to uh, guess which tune it is for them to stop it. God. And also, uh, didn't Rich Voss come up with Thursday? <laughs> All right. Anyway, punch it out. Thanks, Tom. Uh, Anthony, we found a station that's doing September 94.1 KRKX. There really is a September. <laughs> And the, the website says, another year of September has drawn to a close, and a few lucky Aww. listeners walked away with a September t-shirt. That's it? They only gave out a few? What is what is <laughs> September? Like, obviously, they can't just play Led Zeppelin the entire month. If you were one of those select few, email or send us a picture of you in your shirt, and we'll make you famous. Mm. Click September. read more for the address to send your photos. And for the latest addition to the group. Holy crap, where is that? Billings? Montana? Wow. Oof. They only had a few shirts to give away, though. I'm sure they can't commit to September, so it's probably like a block or maybe one Zeppelin song an hour or something. You yeah. Know, with a lot of production around that one song. <laughs> September. <laughs> Thunder and shit. Thunder and yeah, exactly. Lightning bolts. So did you ever listen to Side Four of Physical Graffiti? It's like the last half of it. They were like at like a cookout. It was like a, it's like a plane flying over, and they just nah, leave it. Yeah, and they're like fucking hammered. They just John Paul Jones is playing like a ukulele. Yeah, it sounds good. Hey, hey, baby. <laughs> It's horrible. But those guys were just beyond cool. They could get away with all that shit. Oh, they're this shit. It's just, you know? it's just anything you hear it 9,000 times. All right. Uh, let's say hi to uh, Tim. Tim, what's going on? Nothing. What's going on? Hey. Anthony, Bill, Sparks. Hey. 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 <laughs> uh, here in Buffalo, we got one that'll do their 420 request, man. You want to hear some Bob Marley? Oh, uh, the 420 songs? Yeah, you know, a little Cypress Hill, maybe some fish. Yeah, so some uh, some band that has something to do with pot every day yep. at 420. Really? Watch oh, it yeah. out, boys. That's right, man. cool, man. Well, then uh, some jocks get really brave, and they do the 420 hit, where they have, like, uh, they have the stoner calling at 420. Like, right. Hey, dude, you want, you, you want it? And they play the bong hit sound. Right. Yeah. But they take live hits. But I'm sure with the FCC and all, I'm sure they're now fake hits. Yeah, recorded. Recorded bong sounds yeah. and stuff. But it was the 420 hit every day. That's great stuff. Let's go to Jason in Philly. Jason, what's up? Yo, man, what's going on, guys? Hey. Hey, listen, uh, the one in Philly, in Philly at 5 o'clock is a 5 o'clock attitude adjustment. What's that about? Uh, they, you call up, you had a, you know, a shitty day at work or whatever, you call up and you request a song to make you feel better. Punch me out, boys. All right, thank you. By the way, uh, Mandatory Metallic is alive and well on 94.1 WYSP. Philly. Any one of these cliche things that, that radio does can be found. It, we go goof about them, but people are, their stations doing them all over the all place. All over the country. Mm -hmm. Here's uh, the September highlights. Is this what, oh, yeah, what it this is? September, dude. We carry on the tradition of September in 2005. Zeppelin gets the star treatment all month long. Oh. September 2nd through the 4th, the Get the Let Out Album Shuffle Weekend. All right, Album Shuffle Weekend. <laughs> oh, no, this has to stink. <laughs> Basically, it's Zepp's best albums are highlighted with two furs and song blocks all weekend long. By the way, when we say Zepp's best albums, that would be all of them. <laughs> oh, of course. <laughs> they didn't put out oh, one bad oh, one. Oh, boy. September 9th through 11th. The Live Zepp Block Party Weekend. A block of live Zeppelin once an hour all weekend long. Uh -huh. 
The song remains the same. The BBC sessions, How the West Was Won, live DVD, and plenty of live Zeppelin recordings of uh, indeterminate or origin will make this one of the coolest weekends we've ever aired. Yeah. September 16th through the 18th. The Zeppelin Z to A weekend. See, huh? you could do the A to Z any other time, but when it's September, uh, <laughs> you, you start with, this... with Z. <laughs> oh, God, it's this, the hokiest, corniest shit. <laughs> But they're playing it straight. Of guys. course they are. The greatest tunes from Zeppelin and Zeppelin members, all in reverse alphabetical order. This is not a perfect Z to A. We had to get creative with a few song titles as we're missing some letters. Hmm. Wow. Add in a little creativity there. That's that's good. Creativity and radio? Stop it. September 23rd to the 25th, as part of September. Jimmy's Greatest Riffs Weekend. Oh, no. Oh, no. He's probably throwing something from the firm. Yeah. Remember that horrendous band he sure. the firm. Jimmy Page's best Zeppelin guitar riffs once an hour all weekend long. From Zeppelin 1, Dakota, and beyond, these are the nails that were used to build the home of rock and roll. Wow, man. When he wrote that, did he go, dude, look at this. The nails that were uh, used to build the home of rock and roll. And then finally, September 30th through October 2nd. Hey, wait a minute. That That's not September. It crosses into... over into Rocktober. That gets a little confusing, doesn't it? Wow. The Lost Classic Weekend. The largest library of depth cuts on rock radio anywhere. We start breaking them out at 4 p.m. Friday afternoon. Dude. Dude, you know what's funny about Zeppelin music? Oh. Even like Jimmy Page and Robert Plant are sick of their songs. They've yeah. done them so many times. They always like they always try to do them in a different like style. Like, what if we were from India? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they start that. playing them on like what is that With fucking old, thing that those that little uh, that awful guitar? Like a that, loot. They're using yeah. an old loot. They're using old Renaissance <laughs> fair musicians and. <laughs> <laughs> if the sun refused to shine One of those Australian <laughs> uh, A didgeridoo <laughs> yeah, A didgeridoo, there you go <clears throat> And she's buying the stairway To heaven That's <laughs> 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 the ocean <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it on a little slidey flute, eh? <laughs> Let's see. Uh, I'm trying to find out, find some other ones here. What's this? Todd in Kansas City. What's up, Todd? Hey, how you doing? Hey, man. I go to Houston a lot, and they have a station down here. They have tube stay, what? where some guy talks through a tube on the radio. What? Oh, we gotta get audio. Tuesday, Tuesday. stop it. There's yeah, no such Tuesday. thing as tubes day. Yeah, they do. They have tubes day on Tuesday. Do they play uh, the tubes? Yeah. No, I don't know. I don't listen to the station no more since I got mm. the next them. So. Hey, we gotta get some pro we gotta get some audio of this. I wanna stuff. hear it's, tubes it's day. Tubes is like like the music bed. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the guy talking through the tube, but then you gotta play like, you know, talk to you later in the background or She's right, a right, beauty. Right. She's a beauty. <laughs> that that's probably the theme song of Tubes Day. And the other song. Talk to you later. Talk to you later, <laughs> sure. Or, or, she's a beauty. <laughs> All right. See, like, there's one if you heard, uh, four for Thursday. Yeah. The tubes, you're like, ugh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, stop it. <laughs> they barely have one. <laughs> yeah. All right, Tuesday. All right. We got to get right. some of the production of uh, these special days from these rock radio stations, you know? I think it'd be a lot of fun to listen to. Let's say hi to Joe. Joe, what's up? Hi. On NEW, your old station, they used to have two that killed me. Breakfast in bed with the Grateful Dead. Right. And they used to wake you up with Bruce Juice. Oh, I remember oh, yeah. Bruce, Bruce Juice. Bruce Juice. Oh. Yeah. Good morning. Here's your Bruce Juice. Bruce Juice. Yeah. <laughs> Juggle one. Disgusting. On the home of rock and roll. <laughs> and Anthony, uh, Scott Muni used to... Scott Muni used to start his show with the Beatles song every uh, every shift at three o'clock. Yeah, yeah, we remember that. As I but it out, guys. All right, yeah, welcome but... to Tubes Day. Hey, happy Tubes Day, Opie. Thank you, Anthony. We're gonna do the whole show talking through tubes. And here's our theme song on Tubes Day. It's the tubes on your Kansas City home of rock and roll. 
You know, this is the nails You're... that built the home of rock and roll. The home of Tuesday! It's Tuesday, everybody! Tuesday, get it? That's right. Yeah, I've been listening to your show. Uh, yeah, my name's Charlie Rocket. I'm going to go out to the field now. <laughs> Yeah, I guess we can get into some real radio. If, oh. you, if you remember any other dumb things they do at uh, other radio stations, please give us a call. Oh, what do you want to get into, Opie? <laughs> I'm not stopping. I love Tuesday. <laughs> Tuesday. <laughs> if that's real, I swear it can't be. There is no way Jocks will sit around talking through a tube. <laughs> <laughs> Who thought that up? He's a genius. <laughs> right. I love Tuesday. <laughs> Fucking hang yourself with it. <laughs> Big rubber hose hanging from. The... Oh, do you think that you use that to get a raise? You go into the GM's oh. office like, I need this raise. Don't forget, I'm I'm the one that invented Tuesday. I'm the man behind Tuesday. The only tube he should have in his mouth is cold steel with the words Mossberg embossed on the side. <laughs> And his toe on the trigger. <laughs> That's like watching a comedian just trying to come up with some horrendous fucking catchphrase <laughs> that they can then just put on like uh T shirt. Yeah. Yeah. Something that'll go good on a yeah. mug, a T shirt. I gotta get one of those the top. Get her done phrases. Yeah, I need one. <laughs> what what, what could I do? Uh hurry up and finish it. Nah. <laughs> That's too long. <laughs> oh <laughs> What's the matter, Opie? You got a cough? <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's a problem with your bronchial tube. <laughs> Everything's tube related here. <laughs> that's gonna make me laugh definitely all day. Robert Jersey, what's up, Robert? Hey guys, uh, how you guys doing? Pretty good. Hey. Good man. Uh, I tell you, when I woke up this morning, I swear to God, I was straight. But now, uh, you know, sucking dick is such as looks pretty fucking good to me. <laughs> You dick! <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's say hi to Dave in Ohio. Dave. Hey, how's it going, boys? Hey, Happy what's birthday, up? Bill. Hey, there was this one awful station I used to listen to. They had this promotion, and, and they did it all month. It was absolutely horrible. They played live music all month. They called it July. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we did the Beatles. Yeah. Rock Party Weekend. Rock Party that's a, Weekend. That's a big one. Let's uh, Pat from Monaki's bringing up British Biscuits. British Biscuits, that's right. Yeah. Uh, Justin, what's up? Me? Yeah, Justin. Uh, Dustin, but who gives a fuck? Sorry, Dustin. <laughs> oh, I don't care. We've got there's three packets on the air down here. It's awful, awful, awful. And they do Torture Tuesday where they go out and do these zany little stunts. Oh, uh, with like their uh, uh, whipping boy. Well, yeah, they, they they send their they send their little pansy out on the side of the road, you know, to to do the just go dance on the side of the road and just do the these wacky zany stunts that no one else comes up with. Where he might be in a little trouble by doing it, right? You never know. You oh yeah, be you careful now. Know. You're on the edge. Um, come summertime, it's time for Independent Pants Day, where he goes out wearing a diaper. And I mean, if you can't have fun watching that. You're just not fucking Wait, trying. Wait, in depends day. In depend pants day. <laughs> like almost Independence Day. Why? Almost, but not I don't quite. Get it? That would be uh, uh, that would be really tough to say on the air. Hey, it's in depends pants. In depends pants day. In depends pants day. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Do you have your diapers on today? Well, Charlie's dead. They have 20 after laughter. Huh? Where at uh, 9.20 every morning, they play a clip from a comedian off of one of his CDs. Well, that's just lazy radio. 5 o'clock funnies is a... Yeah, 5 o'clock funnies. Is a big one. 20 where... after laughter. Don't forget, 20 after laughter. Oh, they'll promote it all day. It'll be yeah. sponsored all day. All day. After another block of Zeppelin, we're going to do... What is it called? 20 After Laughter. 20 After Laughter? <laughs> oh. Let me see if it's better this way. 20 After Laughter. Yeah. So much better through a tube. Everything is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're going to move on to some real radio. <laughs> Charles uh, Rocket is dead. You're kidding. We were just talking about suicide yesterday. and this just guy talking to With him. Danny Bonaducci, yeah. 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 This guy did it right. 
<clears throat> we were talking about the kind of suicides that um, they cry for help. The ones people don't really mean. They take some pills, but not really enough. They're, uh, they're in a place where they're going to be found. Maybe they make a phone call before they... They're surrounded uh, by the them. camera crew and their reality <laughs> show. Exactly. That's another cry for help. <laughs> right, right. If there's a reality show around you as you're doing it, yes. I don't think you're really serious about wanting to end your life. No. It's that cry for help thing. Uh, the but pills thing is great. The what, pills? What are you thinking? You, you do a handful of pills, right? It's a slow burn, man. And then you start calling all your loved ones. And yeah. What if you don't get the reaction you're I hoping for? I just took a big hand. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I just took a big handful of pills because I want to end it. No, no, don't call the N911 because I want to end my life. <laughs> it's miserable. I just can't take it anymore. I can't take it. That's terrific. You were never That's there terrific. for me. I was here for you the whole time. <laughs> you can't kill yourself. It's Tuesday. It's t- Oh, quick, call 911. <laughs> yeah, they give the phone call to somebody, a close friend. No, you're so important. You're so special. You have so much to give. You know, it's funny. You know the pills are still in their hand. It's almost like you're yeah. fake calling right, the right. sick <laughs> to work. <laughs> calling the sick. Calling sick to work. <laughs> yeah. And then you wait for knowing they're going to be at your house in 10 minutes, and then you shove the pills in your mouth. Yeah, exactly. Because you really can't even commit to almost killing yourself. Yeah, you, you wait you see the headlights coming up the driveway. Right. Yeah, I'll take them now. It's still in your throat. Somebody just making a fucking U-turn. Now you're really scared. <laughs> <laughs> God, that has got to be the most selfish thing. You take the pills and then call all your loved ones, hoping yeah. hoping that they're going to care that much. They'll call. You know? And then they uh, take you to the hospital, they pump your stomach out, you get some uh, metal help. You know what it is? It's over. It's an attention seeker, right? it's It's a disease. Oh, boy. It's a disease. Oh, boy. Yes, it is. I got so much hate mail yesterday, I, I, I can't even tell you. The whole, is it a you know disease? Somebody has not a disease. Somebody had to say it. People that, that are in stupid it. stupid analogy, like, you smoke cigarettes, then, yeah. then you get cancer. Oh, you should. So, yeah. yeah. I eat a lot of red meat, you get ass cancer. So, obviously... Right. Steak is a disease. Steak is eating steak is a disease. Yeah. Not the d- disease you get from it. Oh, we got plenty of. Uh, well, here's yeah, one from mail. Here's one from Steve who forwarded it to me from someone who did not agree with the alcoholism discussion mm-hmm. from yesterday. All right. Please read this and forward to ONA to. Please read this and forward to ONA to somewhere where they'd read this. Oh, okay. On the replay today, I heard their conversation about alcoholism. They didn't have a clue what they were talking about and, and hit a nerve with me, which after years of listening, they've never done before. Instead of bitching on some fucking board or something, I wrote this email to you guys. My mother was an alcoholic. I'd come home from school from ages 7 to 11 and get beat and yelled at every day. Long story short, by age 11, I told my father I would leave and never come back if we didn't leave that day. We left. Three months later, my mom was found dead in a bathtub. After that, I read a lot about the subject yeah. because of what occurred. <laughs> uh, things to know before you read. THQ. Chemical, when built up in the brain, creates an irresistible craving for alcohol. Uh, uh, dopamine. Dopamine. D o p h a m i n e, right? Yeah. It is released as a response to stress. Tells us to eat, fuck, and run away from the bad guy. Serotonin constrains uh dopamine's actions. When one of mm-hmm. our survival systems brings a need to our attention, it causes pain and thereby produces stress. Holy crap! It just keeps going on. Read it through a tube and you watch how much fun it is, dude. It goes on and on and on and on. Yeah. And on. Wow, you're and still scrolling. On and on and on. So I was did, scrolling that through prove? that hole and on and yeah. on and on and on and on. Basically, he disagreed with yeah, us. Have a drink. Holy so how, how did that crap. prove that it was a disease? Because uh, well, if I could read this whole thing, he he proves the whole thing. It's because a- there's a physical reaction to it in your body. That uh, what this guy yeah. just sent the book report. Stop. We don't have time to read the, that much stuff. Give us a paragraph. How come other people can drink and the same chemicals are built up? You enjoy it, uh, and they can stop. Stop with the disease. I get my information from Mitch Hedberg. 
<laughs> alcoholism is a disease, but it's the only disease that you can get yelled at for having. <laughs> Goddamn Otto, you're an alcoholic. Goddamn Otto, you have lupus. <laughs> One of those two doesn't sound right. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> anyway, Screech from Philly. I'm sorry we pissed you off. We told you we weren't experts, though. It's our opinion, right? So getting back to Charles Rocket. Yeah. This well, guy was on SNL, uh, what, in 1981? In 81? 81. This was, I think, the first cast that took over after they completely wiped the original Not Ready for Primetime Players and brought in an, an entirely new cast. Right. So it was really rough going for those guys. And um, he uh, he s- said the F-bomb on the air live. That was his claim to fame. His claim to fame. It was a biggie. They were doing some kind of Dallas bit. You know, J.R. being shot, and he was in the wheelchair, and somebody asked him about being shot. And he said something like, I don't care. I just want to know who the fuck shot me. Right. It was his big moment. Yeah. And he was fired, like, right when the, the they said, uh, right when the show ended. Right after he was done waving at the end. <laughs> you think they let him? When, uh, do you think they let him get out there and do the wave at the end of 1981, SNL? who do you think was hosting? Wow, 81. Oh. Let me see. We should get more info on this. I want to get. I want to hear the clip too. Was Rick Ocasek the guy, the guy who played Horshack? <laughs> I'll go Ron on. Palillo. Yeah, he was. <laughs> Ron Palillo. Thank you. Good night. <laughs> Actually, it was uh, Charlene uh, Tilton. Was it from Dallas? Yeah, that's okay. why the Dallas skit. Wow, very good. Farmington, Connecticut, actor and comedian Charles Rocket, who had roles in a variety of mo- variety of movies and TV series, and briefly gained notoriety for uttering an obscenity on Saturday Night Live, committed suicide uh, on October seventh. Rocket, fifty-six, whose real name was Charles, blah blah, was found dead in a field near his home in Canterbury on October seventh. His throat had been cut. The medical examiner said. We were just talking about the cutting of the wrist. We don't think that's suicide either. That's an attention seeker. Yeah. Type of no, it thing. depends on how you do it. If you do the. Uh, oh yeah, if you go up uh, up uh, the entire length of the vein. Yeah, if you go yes. vertical. But even if you go across and you don't call anybody, then you're trying to kill. It's, it's when you call somebody. Yeah, it's when you call somebody or you know somebody's coming home in the next few minutes, things like that. <laughs> you go out to a field and slice your throat. You really just want to kill yourself. You that is yourself. top of your list of you things to do. You cut the gas do. line on your car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pull all the phone lines out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pop the SIM chip out of Jesus, your cell phone you and eat it. Slice yourself on the neck. <laughs> like yeah. A field. That's a rough. Do you, is it one attempt or do you go, okay, one, two. No, no, not yet. Okay. One, two. Th- yeah. Because oh, you, you can't do it slow. Because you need pressure and, like, a slow thing. It's got to be one of those move your arm quickly across your throat yeah. with something like a scalpel yeah, or a box need, cutter. No, one of those knives that cuts the tin can in half. A Ginsu and then slices. knife. Yes. Oh. I was thinking a dull, like, uh, steak knife. A little bread knife. <laughs> we have to... <laughs> oh, do a lot of sawing <laughs> and hacking. You know how you get the job done in that situation? You scream really loud. And oh. that, that, may, that helps you along. I, I don't know. Scream How? And pull. How much shit slice. in your brain are you overriding when you're just sitting there continuing to tell your arm to go back and forth across your neck? Hacking across your neck. Yeah. What's going on in that brain? Another 98% of your brain. Stop it. Well, yeah. Please. Right. For the love Dude, of God. What are you doing? Stupid. But there's that one little part going, you got to do this. This is the only way to stop the pain. You know, he was in uh, Dumb and Dumber, too. Oh, yeah? What was he, the uh, the jealous uh, boyfriend, husband, or whatever? I don't even think I've seen that movie all the way through. You, you haven't seen Dumb and Dumber? Not the whole thing, no. He was uh, the husband or the or the boyfriend of what's-her-name that Jim Carrey was uh, all uh, into during the movie? Right. So Charles Rocket is dead, 56 years old. Shit. That's a hell of a way to go. That's one of the big stories today. Eek. <clears throat> All right. You want to take our first break? Continue with some other things. We had another assault on the media. We got the audio. And I think we have a new leader as far as the assault on the media contest goes for October. Ah, uh, so you're saying uh, October. I said I'm thinking. Paul, no filter Paul is uh, out. No filter Paul may be out. Maybe out. Yeah. We'll, uh, we'll figure that out next, so stay there. 
All right, you're checking out the Opie and Anthony program. Bill All Burr right. sitting in for Jim Norton. Jim Norton in L.A. for another two weeks. Then he'll be back for a week. Then he'll be gone for two weeks. Then back for a week. Then gone for two and a half weeks. Then here for maybe three days. And then gone for a week. And then comes back, I think, for ten days at that point. Oh. And then, and then he's gone for another two and a half weeks. But then he comes back for a week. And it uh, goes on and on. And eventually yeah. uh, he'll be back. Hey, when, when does the, his show come out? Well, the HBO uh, half-hour comedy special is this Friday. Mm-hmm. HBO. How about the uh, the Louis C.K. I'm not yeah. sure. Do they know when it's actually going to be on TV? January, February, I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, speaking of uh, Jim Norton and Bill Burr, the listeners have been having a lot of fun with this uh, Jim versus Bill thing. Yes. Uh, something we're not taking seriously at all. We like both guys, and uh, and they both help us uh, greatly on this program. But then um, Steve and the gang started making uh, Bill Burr and Jim Norton uh, campaign commercials. Yeah, I haven't heard any of these. I've just gotten a couple of emails. One, that, of, them, one of them was hilarious. Oh, oh, so you've heard some of them? No, someone just sent me a uh, an email. Well, they have one of my awful pictures with the American flag behind it. Do you want this? And <laughs> yeah. then they go, or this. And they had Norton on some awful guy's body with like a fucking thong. <laughs> the well, election's heating up, of course. Right. Well, we got the political. Uh, Becoming a smear campaign. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You got the political campaigns all over the United States right now. <clears throat> yep. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, Steve took it upon himself to kind of kind of uh, get you guys going at it a little bit. So we got uh, pro Jimmy commercials, pro Bill Burr commercials. Mm-hmm. They're taking on a life of their own. They're pretty funny. So without further ado, here's a pro Jim Norton uh, political ad. In his act, Bill Burr laughs about mushing an old lady's homemade muffins at a street fair. Bill Burr also thinks women are a black hole for fun. Jim Norton loves women. In fact, he even pays for their company all the time. Jim Norton for third mic. Paid for by the fans of Jim Norton. <laughs> I like wow. that it had the ominous music when <laughs> talking about the evil Bill Burr. We're already on that muffins bit. That's uh, relatively new. Hey, uh, yeah. Very Jesus good. Jesus Christ, you guys are up to date. <laughs> well, here's a pro Bill Burr campaign ad. Escorts, urine, pornography. These are only a few things Jim Norton enjoys. Jim Norton has even fantasized about jerking off his girlfriend's father. If he is elected third Mike, who's to say he won't fantasize about jerking off your father? Bill Burr would never rape your family. Bill Burr for <laughs> third Mike. Paid for by the fans of Bill Burr. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Here's another pro Jim Norton campaign ad. Bill Burr hates gays and opposes gay marriage. Do you want a closed-minded fascist as your third mic? Jim Norton frequently visits the transgendered communities. Jim Norton has offered free rides to many transsexuals. Jim Norton for third mic. Paid for by the fans of Jim Norton. Wow, I feel like a real candidate. Yeah. I never said I hate the gays. Yeah, but half, the, not. half the stuff they say in the commercials on TV isn't no, true. They're all lies. All lies. It's, all, it's just all lies. <laughs> and finally, another pro Bill Burr. <laughs> campaign ad. Question. Who is the only third mic guest on the Opie and Anthony show to tell an XM subscriber to, quote, flush his XM down the toilet and fuck his mother? Answer. Jim Norton. I don't care if you throw your XM down the toilet, buy a series, and then fuck your mother. Bill Burr has had nothing but nice things to say, like good morning and thanks for calling. Bill Burr. <laughs> caring. <laughs> gentle. Redhead Bill Burr for third mic. <laughs> Paid for by the fans of Bill Burr. Ah, oh, that one—that was disgustingly accurate. Yeah, I got to get an edge on this show. <laughs> Have a phony call in. So, so those were the original ones we really liked a lot. And then there were two that, uh, I don't know, some people have said might not have uh, hit the mark. Yeah. Uh, and then I we got two we new the ones. the term lackluster. Lackluster? Yeah. A little tarnished. Well, here's the... Uh, Woefully miscast. <laughs> here's a pro-bill campaign ad. Long-term care for senior citizens is a critical issue. Jim Norton's response was to sodomize an elderly man with a slide whistle. Oh, we love you, pop-pop. Bill Burr uses a well-lubricated penny whistle. 
caring, sensitive, redhead. Bill Burr for third mic. Paid for by the fans of Bill Burr. See, I didn't get that one. I didn't understand why he would use a penny whistle. Well, they're both raping Grandpa. Right. Yeah, and isn't there but something he's kinda, a little nicer. The Irish leprechaun thing going on there. Uh, oh, I didn't even notice it's, that. Yeah. Uh, wow. I'm actually, mostly German. You're just yeah. using a uh, soft... Here's a fun-filled fact for you. You're just using a softer whistle. You're just... Not as harsh. You're both doing a very mean-spirited thing. Like it's a roundabout way of saying I don't like to be shit on. Yeah. Here's You're a, mostly German? Yeah. Is that true, really? Yeah, 75. Kinda, 75%. can have that look. That's why I don't yeah. have like the, the totally like uh, pasty face mix. I, I kind of have a little bit of a jawline. Yeah, yeah, the jawline is what I'm looking at. It. I'm trying to see you in one of those German helmets, so I put my hand <laughs> I there. I see that, Anthony. Like, any time someone says they're German, you could picture them in that goddamn uniform. <laughs> you know, I, no. Say what uh, you want about what they did. They, they had some of the, the best uniforms. As far as, like, the military I've uniforms. always said the snappiest dressers out of any war, any century, have got to be nothing. Close second is the uh, U.S. Marines when when they, they have uh, their... I don't know, their formal kind of wear their with the white hat. Yeah, 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 that is that's, that's a badass stuff. uniform. But when that when they show the uh, the staff car pull up and one of those German SS guys gets out and uh, jack boots, they got the long leather coat and the, the oh, yeah. hat and the that is some damn snappy yeah. wear. I've been looking for one of those that. coats. I want one of those Nazi coats. <laughs> Jesus, I'm telling you, they're great. They just don't make them like that yeah, anymore. Yeah, it adds a sense of mystery to you. Yeah. You know what? Fans is he a snappy one in dresser now. or is he uh, down with Hitler? Right. Exactly. Someone's, Best dresser ever. Someone's going to send one in now. You know that. All right. Here's another campaign ad. Bill Burr exposed himself to a group of seniors during a magic show. What? Jim Norton thinks magic shows are gay. Jim Norton for third mic. Paid for by the fans of Jim Norton. So we're not sure if those two hit the mark. Maybe no. you're just going with like a smear campaign just to kind of make a Total point. smear yeah, campaign. Yeah, there's a whole smear campaign going on. Mm -hmm. So we got two new ones, a pro Jim Norton and a pro Bill Burr. All right. Starting with the uh, the pro Jim Norton here. These are brand new. We haven't heard these yet. Bill Burr thinks retarded children from Newark named Russell are mockable. Jim Norton gives special needs kids delicious treats like chewing gum, pennies, and little green army men. Jim Norton won't let the retards go hungry. Jim Norton for third mic. Paid for by the fans of Jim Norton. <laughs> All right. That's, that's a good not one. Not bad. That's very good based on some things that have been said on the show. <laughs> and finally, this one. Jim Norton leaves a conga line of sexually transmitted disease wherever he goes. Do you want a filthy robe-wearing deviant for your third mic? Bill Burr has a robust immune system and T cells to spare. Bill Burr for third mic. Hey, for the fans of Bill Burr. That's funny. I like the conga line thing from the uh, yeah. Corzine ads. <laughs> Corzine Forrester, uh, Jersey governor race heating up. Those are the commercials that like we're goofing on. Oh, I, I see. I, I heard one yesterday. Uh, I guess Forrester is a businessman more so than a politician in Jersey. And Corzine has been a politician. So Corz one of Corzine's ads yesterday, I saw it, and it just goes to show you what bullshit these things are. He says, uh, John Forrester has said that uh, Corzine has raised taxes. Well, uh, Corzine has, has lowered taxes. John Forrester has made millions off of taxpayers' dollars, making it sound like he's in a back room going, you know, Hey, ma, say, let's get some more money, say. <laughs> ma, well, smoking cigars, lighting them with taxpayer dollars and everything. The truth is, he's a businessman who got contracts with the state of New Jersey. So he offered his services as a businessman to Jersey, and it was paid for by taxpayers, but it's paying for a product. There was nothing illegal about it, nothing wrong with it, but the way the Corazine ad made it sound like, uh, Corazine's cutting taxes. Forrester's just loading his pockets with your money for nothing. <laughs> like and, those and little sacks of money with the dollar with signs. With the dollar the signs on it. And he's <laughs> yeah. just looking on. Nuh-uh-uh. Nuh-uh-uh. I think it might have the ads here, the two latest ones. They are so bad. It, and, and and I don't know. I hope the voters really can can read, so read minute, up he, on the he's facts. He's holding public office and then he has businesses. That are getting state contracts. That's a no, this guy's up. trying to get in public office. 
Oh, he, 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 yeah. oh he's not in them. He's oh, running. Yeah, yeah that's, he's that's, running. That's, yeah, that's stupid. But so they're bashing him like you know he was a businessman. He's made millions off of your taxpayer dollars. Well, filling in potholes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Filling in potholes and building bridges. Someone's what? screaming at you because it's Doug Forrester, not John. Whatever. Oh, Doug Forrester? I don't know. Who's the guy, the other guy? Uh, I don't John, live in Jersey. Uh, Corzine. I can give a shit who wins. Yeah. Well, I mean, you got the, the you Doug got these Forrester. ads in your town as well. I mean, this is not something that just Jersey's doing. That's right. Sure. And then at the end of the campaign, I love how they, they thank their opponent and say he's really a good guy and this and yeah. that. But they're, they're at each other's throat yes, until the yes. election. Doug Forrester. Yes, I know. Doug Forrester. Okay. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it. Here's the latest commercial. Stop it. I don't like some of the things being said about my friend Doug Forrester. They're just not true. I've known Doug for over 30 years. Like me, he's his own man. He's a moderate who supports a woman's right to choose. And Doug Forrester is one of the most honorable men I've ever known. Doug will clean up the corruption in Trenton. And he has a real plan to cut property taxes by 30% in three years. Doug Forrester is the change we need to save New Jersey. <laughs> New Jersey. Who was he? He was the old uh, governor, right? I can't get past the fact that he can't say 30. <laughs> 30. <laughs> 30. He, used to, he used to be the governor of New Jersey. Tom Kane? Is that his name? Something like that? Kane or Keen? Tom and, Kane? Yeah, he used to be the... Um, the uh, governor, and he, he, he was on all the ads for Jersey, and he, he used to say, New Jersey and you, perfect together. <laughs> like, you can't say, I, I don't know what what accent that is. So what is that, part of Jersey accent? So now after hearing that commercial, you gotta vote for Doug Forrester, right? Doug Forrester. Well, then you get the other guy. Doug Forrester's attack ads are misleading, an exaggeration. They're just not true. John Corzine has voted to lower taxes 70 times. And Doug Forrester? As a mayor and councilman, Doug Forrester raised property taxes 200%. Now he's proposed a plan that eliminates property tax rebates for seniors and the middle class <laughs> and gives tax credits to the wealthy. It's a plan that will require deep cuts in education and health care. Doug Forrester, the wrong answer for New Jersey. Can't vote for Forrester. He yeah. doesn't like old people. He hates old Doug people. Forrester money away. punches babies. <laughs> yeah, that's what they're getting to. And when you hear Doug Forrester, you hear that ominous music, so you can't vote for him. I know, the Dan oh. Danny Bonaducci soundtrack. <laughs> right. I don't like myself. <laughs> uh, Doug Forrester's an ass. This is from uh, some uh, Zoltec. Uh, let's see. In one of his commercials, it says, Corazon is against easy sales of weapons for criminals. That's what it says. Forrester voted against the bill to stop easy sales of weapons to criminals. Like, like he he approves of sales. Like this other guy approves. Corzine approves selling weapons to criminals. Basically, <laughs> make it as easy as possible for the criminals right, to get their guns. for the criminals to get their weapons. Plus, also, whenever they they sign one of those things, isn't there a whole bunch of other shit always piggybacking? That's why it? they they so don't be... sign the bill. Yeah, there's a bill to let's say a bill to. Uh, give a lot more money to education. And on that bill is some construction project that makes no sense and costs a whole bunch of money, and it's on the same bill. So if you sign the bottom and approve it, you've approved everything on the bill. So when you don't sign it and you say, no, I don't approve of this, then on the campaign ad, you go, he voted against money for educating your children. Well, talk about the other thing that was on the bill. Right, I didn't like well, this why, bill. Why is that? I think that right why there is that is, allowed? Is the seed of the corruption it's in there. It's sneaky. It's a sneaky fucking thing. Why not just one bill, one For issue? For one thing. Yeah. yeah. Why don't they do that? Because they're a bunch of sneaky asses. I think, they, that, I think that's how the games play. It's the game. Exactly. You just expose the Illuminati. <laughs> the Illuminati. <laughs> <laughs> the Illuminati. <laughs> No, that is bullshit. Yeah. At what what other point in your life is is it like that? You know, you with your girl, you want to go to the movies, and if you agreed to going to the movies, you're also somehow advocating like uh, pedophilia. Yeah. Something else is like riding on that. Rides on that. They they it doesn't happen when you you know, you buy something, you buy a vehicle, you go to buy a car. It's going to cost you six hundred thousand dollars because a house is attached to it. Actually, you know what happens? It happens at Valley's Total Fitness. You go in there. 
You oh, really? Yeah, I think I just want to work out for 20 minutes. Then somehow you have like a fucking eight-year membership. <laughs> <laughs> they got your credit card and there's a collection agency calling you. That's what happened to me. <laughs> really? Like, I just want to do some crunches. <laughs> <laughs> this is what you know what those fucks did to me. Then they go, all right, you know what? You want to get out of it? There's a hundred dollar cancellation fee. So like an asshole, I send it in, and then I'm still getting charged. I'm like, what? What? I paid oh, the hundred dollar cancellation fee, and they go, yes, but there's a Bally's within a three thousand mile radius of your apartment, so that you you can't you can't get out of your membership fee. It's like, well, why the fuck didn't you say that, sir? You can't use that language. Well, where's my hundred? Where was your hundred? They didn't send you a hundred back either. Oh, Wow, did you get fucked in the ass on that one? Yeah, but I, I, I actually at one point I actually got one of the collection agency people to hang up on me. Really? They, they, they had actually gone like, uh, "Sir, this will destroy your credit if you do not pay for this." And I said, "You know what? I have perfect credit other than this, and I really can't see in the future if I go to put down, you know, if I'm going to buy a five hundred thousand dollar house." They won't let me buy the house because I owe fucking two hundred eighty dollars to a gym. To right? a gym, yeah. And they go, sir, you know what? That's really interesting because just the other day we had somebody call in and go, oh my god, please, 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 how do I pay for this? I just tried to buy a house and they won't let me because I owe money to Bally's Total Fitness. And I went like, oh my god, that's amazing. That is the exact same scenario I just <laughs> presented to you. It's almost like you made it up. And then I finally got her to backpedal, and then I started hitting on her. <laughs> and she, I started going, how old are you? She goes, sir, that had nothing to do with it. And I knew if I didn't curse, she couldn't hang up. She goes, I'll see you for harassment. I go, for what? Asking your age? And then she clicked. And I was like, yes, <laughs> victory is mine. Yeah. That's great. We got more uh, political ads coming in. Which candidate for governor shares our values? John Corzine supports embryonic stem cell research. Just like George Bush, Doug Forrester is opposed. John Corzine supports closing the loopholes that criminals use to buy guns at gun shows. Forrester is opposed. John Corzine has defended the right to choose. Just like Bush, Doug Forrester has supported Supreme Court justices who would overturn Roe vs. Wade. Only one candidate is on our side. John Corzine. Just like Bush. Well, you gotta vote for Corzine. Bush's approval rating is so awful right now, they're gonna drag that. They tie him in, They're gonna yeah. drag that into the, uh, the campaign. <laughs> Just like Bush. Doug Forrester's, Doug Forrester's attack ads are misleading and exaggeration. They're just not true. John Corzine has voted to lower taxes for the middle class. Got the happy music. And Doug Forrester? Doug Forrester has gotten rich off the taxpayers. Forrester got $89 million in no-bid insider deals in New Jersey in just the last year alone. All paid for by the taxpayers. Doug Forrester. Getting rich. At the taxpayer's expense. <laughs> the taxpayer's expense. He still does business with the state of New Jersey. You know people are buying it, too. Oh, fucking of piece of shit. <laughs> Motherfucker is still, like, pocketing our tax money. Like he's boss hog. What is the, what's, what's the he guy voted doing? against not lighting people on fire. <laughs> this guy's an asshole. Dude, he's... He's the next Hitler. <laughs> That's my favorite thing. Anytime he does anything remotely crazy, remember yeah. like Howard Dean? The guy screams out a bunch of fucking states, and then they're like, "Dude, he's the next Hitler." <laughs> it. It's like you think it's a little bit of an exaggeration. The guy kills six million people. Yeah. This guy's screaming, "I'm going to Tennessee. Right. I'm going to unchecked. Arkansas." Leave him unchecked. He's the next Hitler. If they could have gotten Hitler back in you know the early 30s, like we got this guy here, this nut. Right. Yelling out states. Dude, that's names. like you, you buy a ukulele and you strum one chord. Dude, he's next Hendrix. <laughs> <laughs> this guy is just, he's going places. Yeah, Hitler's like the top of the crazy people. Oh, list. yeah. <laughs> King of all evil. Yeah. We're going to uh, back up a little bit. We got the Charles Rocket uh, curse from SNL. Ooh. Charles Rocket committed suicide. Oh, wow. Our crack team. He was on SNL 1980 to 1981, one season. He cursed. He was fired. Fast forward about 25 years later, and he uh, killed himself in a field by slashing his own throat. Bill Burr harasses female employees of Bally's <laughs> and doesn't pay his bills. People are emailing in. <laughs> See? Look out. <laughs> this is going to be very hissy. We might not be able to understand this, but let's give it a shot. Sorry, sorry, you're feeling after you've been shot. Oh, man, it's the first time I've been shot in my life. I'd like to know who fucked you. <laughs> What do you think he's thinking there? Uh, what do you 
think he's thinking right there. It's a bad copy, but you hear the fuck. Yeah. Wow. And then there was a big, the reaction, big reaction, obviously. And uh, that leads to Sonya head off in a field. That's it. Fast forward. Fast wow. forward, and there you are in a field. You got to think at the time he was just being very cocky, like, "Hey, this is my moment. I'll curse. I'll get a lot of headlines. I'll be the." Uh, no, I think that I'll sounded the... like it just kind of slipped you up. You think? I don't know. You can... I've done that on gigs when when they go, uh, "Don't." Uh, don't curse. You got to be totally clean on that. Mm-hmm. And I'll be in my as long as I'm in my act. It's weird. I can see the f words coming, but then someone will say something to me in the crowd, and I curse so much in everyday life. Yep. You know, you just use it as like a word to think. You know yeah, what I mean? Like yeah. by the time, like, who is that? Uh, that fucking, uh, you know, <laughs> you do stuff like that, and then you're like, oh, yeah. I do that in front of like people's children sometimes. <laughs> it's pretty fucking annoying. <laughs> you forget yeah, sometimes. Yeah, oh shit! I'm sorry. Ooh, and go ooh. like, yeah. Ah, the guy was just giving me bullshit, and I oh, and then they look like, um, and they point to the kids. Ah, the little fucker's <laughs> fine. <laughs> don't worry about him. I don't know. I think he was going for the headlines to be the breakout, uh, you know, cast member. He saw the headlines like this is going to. You think? I, I'm thinking that, yeah. Uh, nah. You don't think so? You really think he just slipped? Dude, you got to look at his. He he slid in there, and he's trying to replace like. You know, Ackroyd, Belushi, I mean. Chevy so Chase is gone. So he, you're gonna do something like that? I would. I'd be worried about the screen. He probably felt the yeah. pressure. I'm thinking. E. Like these. Look what. Look what these guys did. Everyone's talking about these guys. Oh, what can I, I do to uh, get my name out there? Yeah, but it kind of sounds like he said it and then just quickly stopped the second he said it. Like, oh, it, it's almost like yeah, he he tried to choked it off. Yeah, tried yeah. to put the brakes on. Let's just put this in. Did Norm Macdonald say it? Norm Macdonald did it. Did he curse? What? Yeah, he was doing the news, I think. And uh, let me just throw in this shit out here. Yeah, yeah. Now, hey, 20% you, research. You got a mic, <laughs> you got a mic in front of you. It's got to be fact. You got a mic in front of you. You're an expert. So it had to matter. Had had here, comes, here comes the ad campaign for Jimmy. Bill Burr makes up shit about <laughs> Norm McDonald. No, he was doing the, I think he was doing the news. And uh, whatever picture they put over his head didn't match up with the copy. Uh-huh. And he was just like, yeah, how fucking hard is it to blah, blah, blah. Whoa. Yeah, but by then, you know, there was the internet. Yeah. Right. You know, you got a little think, different than 1981. Yeah. Back then, there was like three networks. But we were saying during commercials that if Eddie Murphy said fuck back in the day, he wouldn't have got fired. Nothing. Yeah, Eddie Murphy was carrying the show. He could have right. done that. Yeah. He could have taken his dick out. <laughs> All right, it went too far. Okay. <sighs> what is this about? Mark the Trucker. Mark, what's up? Hey, what's up, guys? Hey. Hey, you guys got to turn it into a bit. The funniest shit you ever said to a bill collector when they call. One lady asked me, how come I'm always late on my bill? It was for, like, Best Buy or some shit like that. And they just bluntly blurted out, you know what? I'm just horribly fucking irresponsible. And she just went totally quiet. <laughs> yeah. What the, do, do they have an yeah. answer for that one? No, you can't no, mess with honesty. absolutely honest. not. All right. Thank you, Mark. Peace. Bye. Punch it out. I only had that. I never had a, a bill collector call or anything. I had the one problem with the car uh, many years ago where they repoed my car. And uh, then you were living in the car at the time, weren't uh, you? No, no. I was living uh, like across in some apartment by the train station. And I used to park it everywhere. I used to park it in different spots all the time. The repo guy came to my job once, so I quit my job. He came to my job and, <laughs> and said, and he was going to take it. And I actually, I pleaded with this guy to let me just get, give me till tomorrow. I just need till tomorrow. I have the money. I just got to get it. Did you have the money? No. Fuck no. So he goes, all right, I will be here tomorrow. And he must have really been pissed because I just quit my job. Because I figured I could get another job if I had the car. But if I lost the car, I couldn't even get to the job I had. So quit the job. I quit that job. And then uh, I parked around and for eight months. I kept them on the run. And then one day I went out to my car and looked at the spot and went, ah, shit, he got me. You got it? <laughs> I don't know how. Did you always make sure you took all all your shit out of the car? Yeah, there was nothing all in there. All your cassettes? Yep, my cassettes. <laughs> my cassettes. <laughs> my Bob Seger and the Silver Bullet Band. Uh, <laughs> your eight tracks. Live <laughs> bullet. Yeah, live bullet. I feel like a number. <laughs> I'm not a number. That's right. All right, we have another hurricane happening. Down where? Heading toward the Gulf again? Hurricane Wilma. It's heading toward your vacation resort. It's heading toward my vacation spot mm-hmm. that, that I'm supposed to fly to Saturday. 
I might be canceling my vacation. Just swim with no. the sharks. Yeah, have fun in, at uh, Disney or wherever you're going, because I think I might be staying home. Oh, you'll be fine. We'll see. But That's passing. It's going to be passed by by the time you get there. Here's the latest on Hurricane Wilma. Wilma. Wilma is on the verge of becoming a hurricane. May happen within a few hours. Right? Uh, I believe that is correct. It's a strong tropical storm right now with maximum sustained winds of 70 Man. miles per hour, likely to become a hurricane later today, if not later this morning. Tropical storm Wilma remains nearly stationary this morning in the Caribbean Sea, about 220 miles east-northeast of the border of Honduras and Nicaragua. Where is it going? That's what everyone wants to know here. Here's the projected path of Wilma. It takes it near or across the western tip of Cuba by Friday and then possibly towards southern Florida by the weekend. We have to say that the future path of Wilma is fairly uncertain, but right now some of the models are suggesting it poses a threat to Florida by this weekend. Of course, we'll have to see how it develops during the course of the rest of this week. Hey. <laughs> hey, that's where I'm going. Oops. <laughs> Bastards. Looks like it's taking a right turn from my vacation spot right toward yours. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> what part of Florida, though? Because I have to do a little uh, switcheroo. Oh, I'll Florida. be in Orlando. I'm fine. I have to do a little switcheroo in Florida. I, I, I think I'm screwed no matter what. I think I'm screwed. All I'm right. Play a little golf. Let's, uh, you want to see if this guy is beating out, uh, No Filter Paul as far as the assault on the media contest goes, Ant? Uh, I watched the video, and if I was voting, I would say he beats him. Really? Yep. He's got the energy, he, uh, blurts out the name plenty of times, and he's crazy. Yeah, this is, uh, a guy named John from Jersey. Do you want to explain the assault on the media contest, Anthony? Getting new oh, listeners certainly. every day thanks to this XM thing? You know, you watch your local news uh, every night, your know, national news. You just uh, you see the reporter out in the field, they call it. It's when they stand there with their mic and they go, I'm here in front of blah, blah, blah. Well, your job to assault the media is to get behind that reporter, uh, preferably in some kind of wacky suit. <laughs> we love the guy in the gorilla suit, uh, chicken outfit. Um, what was the mask the one guy was wearing? Uh, a Jim Norton mask. A and Norton a, mask. And a Pat Battle ma yeah, mask. Yeah, there's one. just been uh, great ones. So preferably in some type of uh, costume. Uh, and just blurt out the Opie and Anthony show references. Opie and Anthony, XM Satellite Radio. Or hold up the signs. Some guy was yelling Ben's hog right. the other day as he was dressed in a thong with a <laughs> double dong dildo in his hand. So uh, be creative. That was the gang from Buffalo. Yeah. They got their own little... Uh Factions all, the whole, all over the media country. Gang, like Buffalo is competing with Boston, which uh -huh. is competing with New York a little bit. Yep, it's getting a little nuts. And uh, Buffalo Paul, that assault was going to be great, but uh, they were on to him. The cameraman started spinning around. They saw the guy circles. coming with the double dong dildo and the uh, and the uh, and the, uh, and the uh, panties thing. Yeah, the, the thong. Uh, the thong, and and they they were able to keep him out of the shop. But you heard Opie and Anthony. Yep. Yeah. That'd be a bit of a red flag, I would think. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. And then you got the the guys using the air horns. We Those like that. Great. That's being uh, pretty creative. And the new thing we're throwing into the mix is to try to engage the reporter live on TV. Just spark up a conversation try with him. Try to spark up a conversation. Get and right next to him and go, hey, how much a camera like that go for? Or, excuse me, do you listen to Opie and Anthony? Yeah, something like excuse that. Excuse me, I'm talking to you. Excuse me. Excuse, excuse me. me. Just act like Sir, you have miss. no idea that he's on live yeah. TV. Miss. Miss. Miss, I'm talking to Hello. you. You're being rude. Yeah, things like that. I think that'll keep the contest going and keep it interesting, mm -hmm. right? So it's uh, happening every month, the Assault on the Media contest. We got lots of prizes for October, including a portable Delphi MiFi radio, which will give you also a one-year free subscription for your new MiFi. Also, dinner with our own E-Rock. At Paisano's in Mulberry Street in the heart of Little Italy. Again? Does he have to do this for every month? <laughs> yes. Every winter? Yes. Get dinner with Iraq? <laughs> Stunning conversation. Yes. E but it, did you go to e your last dinner, Iraq? No, not yet. No? When is that slated for? As soon as he can get down here. Ah. Uh, all right. And it's Paisano's, though. We love Paisano's. Love it. We love Joey and the gang at uh, Paisano's in Mulberry Street in the heart of Little Italy. Also, World Poker Tour Season 2 on DVD. Also, Ministry of Sound, Stick Axe, Music Mixer, and finally, admission to the Opie and Anthony show to check out the show the next yeah. time you're in New York if you're not a New York winner, okay? So I guess we should play uh, Paul's again. This video is up on opianthony.com. Paul, no filter Paul, looks like a complete lunatic. And this was a national assault on the media. It was on Fox News. Yeah, that's true. Uh, here's the audio of that one. 
Todd Connor joins us live from New York Times Square. Todd? Hey there, Greta. Uh, Mayor Michael Bloomberg is uh, spending his day defending his actions to make the threat public and also to flood the city subways with uh, thousands of police officers and extra security saying he would rather err on the side of caution. Oh, and of course, nice subways right also uh, being rather cautious today. Reporters uh, <laughs> reporting countless abandoned bags oh, and suspicious items. This guy <clears throat> found on train tracks in Midtown. Police All right, there you have it. He sounded like he got t grabbed by the throat. Yeah, it, yeah they definitely grabbed grabbed him. Yeah, pulled him out of frame. <laughs> the face oh, man. Oh. It's, the video is priceless. It's one of my favorites to date because he looks like a complete crazy. They're here. They're here and they're coming for you. He's that crazy guy. Yeah, and the report was so smooth. He just kind of looked to his side a little bit. That's it. And then they had like, uh, I don't know, goons that uh, pulled Paul away in mid Opie and Anthony. No, they got to be having some sort radio. of briefings at this point. Well, Anthony and I yeah. were talking about this in the office. You got to think, because the latest one is a, is a good example of this, that the newsrooms, they're all abuzz about this assault on the media thing, because it's really taking on a life of its own. And you got to think they're telling their people, look, just ignore it, just plow ahead, make believe it's not happening, and eventually this whole thing will, will go away. You know? Watch him come out to the... Look at him. Look, there he is, and he gets pulled by his sweatshirt. Dragged away. <laughs> what a tool. I love it. What do you think, Bill? <laughs> it was kind of yeah. It helps if you have the audio. It just mm -hmm. oh. he didn't put up a struggle or anything. No, he kind of okay. Yes, sir. I'll walk away. Yes, uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He didn't I'm keep sorry. yelling. Right. No. Right. So anyway, yeah, we think that they're being told, look, just plow through. Eventually, this will go away. You know, but we're pests. We're gonna just keep going and going and going. Yes. Until you acknowledge us. Pestering. Until you acknowledge us, we're gonna continue this thing. It ain't. It, it's not going away anytime soon. Especially when uh, some of the listeners start engaging the reporters in conversation. Hello? Just a little conversation. Excuse me. Excuse hey, me. Not the time. All right. Here's the latest. It's from John in New Jersey. Here's the audio. The video is up on opianthony.com. Mother Nature's trifecta of high tides, steady winds, blowing <laughs> rains, etc. Forced this, the lake, to spill over on both sides. And the result was evacuation. And also a nearby... <laughs> <laughs> Look at this lunatic. He's just he's Oh, that's awesome. Him. That's Shut awesome. Bang. Very nice good clear one. Clear audio. That that one was better. You think that's better? Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, no filter Paul's not going to be happy. Yeah, I think this guy's in the lead. You think? Let's listen yeah. to the audio one more time. Mother Nature's trifecta of high tides, steady winds, blowing rains, etc. Force this, the lake, to spill over <laughs> on both sides. And the result was a vacuum. Radio. Lake and also a nearby... <laughs> Plus, he's, I like how he gets on both sides of the shoulders to make yeah, sure he's in yeah. the shot. That's really cool. Yeah, I guess we, we should explain because it is radio. He's, he's in the back of the reporter, yeah, just lifting his arms up in the air as he does it. You know, what, he looks like he's part of, you remember the uh, on the Fat Albert cartoon, whenever they would go to laugh? Remember Weird Harold in the background? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he have his hands up. That's what he looks like. He goes to the right of the reporter and then to the left just in yeah. case. And the reporter, once again, smooth. And you know these guys uh, this are like... Guy's a pro. Ah, oh, this will eventually go away. No, you can't ignore us. It's just going to get uglier and uglier because our listeners are pests. They, they're they going to get more and more creative with this thing. Oh, yeah. So we're going to give it to him or what? Yeah, I think he's in the lead. You think John from New Jersey is in the lead? We yeah. have a new leader. Let's say hi to John in Jersey. He's calling the show right now. What's up, John? How you doing, guys? All hey, right. Man. What's up, Billy? What's going on, man? John? Yeah. So walk us through it. What happened? Uh, well, I got there and I called a friend of mine to be a spotter, and uh, he just he tells me go go go. So I start running up. Well, I'm on a little a little island, and Joe looks at me like, "Holy crap! Here's this fat piece of shit coming at me. I better move." So I'm dancing around behind him. I was trying to do something like I'm pulling at my head, like the the world is coming to an end because it's all flooding. Wait, I gotta interrupt you. This is what I love about the assault on the media thing. Someone will start a trend, and then others will follow it for a while. Right. Remember the f the first guy that started the Opie and Anthony on XM Satellite Radio. Radio. Yeah. And then you had three or four guys do that exact thing, and then we went to costumes and masks. Uh -huh. And then one guy tried the air horn and worked perfectly, so then uh, everyone else was doing the air horn. Air horn. And now I, I have a feeling that uh, you <laughs> you were inspired by No Filter Paul's assault Panicky on the media, guy. right? Yeah. 
So now we're doing panicky guy. Yeah, like, the world coming to an end, panic guy. Yeah. <laughs> so, I had a, I have a, I'm a local fireman. I had a fire helmet. I was gonna put that on. Yeah. To run around him, but the fire where I was standing, the fire helmet just looked too out of place, and I didn't want to like throw it away. Right. Just as it got done, I leaned my head over Joe's shoulder to get in that one little shot, and they had already cut the scene. Oh. I looked at Joe, and he looked at me like, you son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah, they're then never happy. Just to, his, just to his right was the Channel 2 news crew. And the camera guy from the Channel 2 crew tried to grab my shoulder, and I just walked away. Right. Well, the newscaster comes up behind me, and she's like, you're a fucking asshole. You're a fucking asshole. What the fuck do you think you're doing? Obviously, she was off the air, and I turned around and looked at her and go, what the fuck is your problem, man? <laughs> and turned around and walked away. And that's why they, they get, didn't know what to say. That's why they get so frustrated. There's nothing they can do as long as you don't touch the reporter. And we, we you know, tell you guys, don't yeah. touch the reporter. They could just yell a little bit. That's about it. That's all they can, she, they're going to be able to do to you. She said to me at one point, I wish you had done that to my team because she was standing in the water. And I had thought about going and standing between her and the camera. There was a long gap in there. Yeah. And I was going to splash around in the water in front of her. Right. And she said to me, if you did that to my scene, I would have pushed you in the water. This is and the I girl you got to get. Yeah. yeah. And I thought, you know what? Going through my head was, boy, that would have been even better than doing it to Joe. I got to be honest. Some of you pests out there, you guys got balls. Uh, a lot of people balls. commenting, uh, a couple of people on instant feedback. The best part is the guy's timing. Right as the reporter says, the lake spilled over on both sides, and the result is Opie and Anthony, XM Satellite Radio. And a couple of people have commented on that. I let's, never noticed that. Yeah, let's listen to that again. Mother Nature's trifecta of high tides, steady winds, blowing rains, etc., forced this, the lake, to spill over on both sides. And the result was a vacuum. Opie and Anthony, XM Satellite Radio! <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> I never noticed that yeah, before. A little twist to it, John. John, well, the uh, listeners are calling in and voting, and they're saying that you're, you've taken out No Filter Paul, and I think you're in the lead as far as the assault on the media contest for October goes. Very cool. Very cool. Congratulations there, buddy. Thank you, guys. All right. Anything else you want to add? or? Nope. That's it. Yeah. That hey, was... what's the name of that other reporter, the one who seems they, she has a temper? I have no clue. Mm -hmm. it, was a young, it was a young blonde hole. That's all it was. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Very good, John. All right. Thanks, guys. There he goes, yeah, John. Yeah, get her. It'd be Bye -bye. great. Oh, yeah. Just to see her, her lose her she mind. She might drop the F-bomb. Yeah. Try to push the guy. How funny would that be if one of our listeners got pushed in a lake? <laughs> then that, that person gets fired for losing their cool. Of there you course. Go. Wouldn't be the first time. Nope. Uh, <laughs> Doug, what's going on? Hey, what's up, guys? Hey, Doug. Uh, have these guys bring a tape recorder and record the uh, reporters afterwards so you can play it on the air when they're cursing at That's a good idea. Yeah, uh, there's only one person trying to do stuff like that. It's uh, Buffalo Paul. Buffalo Paul actually films his own assaults on the media as they're going down. So not only do you get the live shot, now you got the behind-the-scenes footage. An yeah. Ashton Kutcher shot. Yeah, some side. of those some of those are pretty funny because you, yeah. s you see what was on live <laughs> TV. Paul did one where he has a video camera facing the cameraman. So then you see that shot, and it's it's kind of interesting to see. The punked cam. Yeah. yeah. That's All actually right. cool. Thank yeah. you, Punch it out. All right. Thank you, Doug. Bye. So there you go. A new leader on the Salt on the yep. Media Contest for October. Bravo. I even like the sound of his voice. He had this kind of crazy shrill. Yeah. All right. Yeah, some people thought it was a chick. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> this voice is a little high for a guy. We've had a lot of uh, assaults on the media for October. Mm -hmm. We've had five or six now. All right. Steve wants us to play this thing. I don't even know what this is. Maybe we Tis can get Steve in here. Tis it. Before we take a break. It's this. My name is John Dacre. Hello, Steve. Hello. What the hell is this? This is a, a, talent, uh, a talent show video that somebody sent me uh, last night. And I did some research on it, and it's from Peoria, Illinois, about 15 years ago. 15 years, huh? Yeah, the the, the video is really grainy. It's old um, old videotape of people that were all students of a woman of of a music teacher named Riva Unsicker somewhere in Peoria, Illinois. 
and someone found an entire videotape of these people doing a talent show, and this guy's name is John Daker, and he's singing Ooh. a medley. A medley? <laughs> he's doing a medley. Uh, of, like, religious songs? No. Are they all religious? Because that was religious. What is it? Christ the Lord has, Christ the Lord has risen, it was whatever that song is, into That's Amore. But he's so, he's so taken aback when the camera hits him, obviously. Like, he obviously walked into the scene composed and then froze when oh, the camera hit him. He freaked and forgot the words to all the songs. So it just launches from one song to another and then completely forgets the words to, to That's Amore when all he launches right. into it. Uh, That's Amore. 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 <laughs> that's Amore. Amore. Ah, that's uh, that's awful. <laughs> yeah, it was really the video. The video helps a lot because you just see his eyes bugging out and he's twitching. He's obviously very uncomfortable. You could he's... tell he's a little nervous. It's a movie. That's a movie. Now yes. has he, he sliced his neck yet in a field? <laughs> he should. Evidently, he's still alive, and so is everybody else. Uh, what else? <laughs> We got to play. Roll, 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 Maury. Maury. <laughs> <laughs> twinkle, twinkle, little Maury. <laughs> I think we have to play some Silence of the Lambs, the musical now. Would you? Would you? Would you? Sounds like it a little bit. What else is going on on the website there, Steve? Anything we have all the, uh, the new Assault on the Media clips. Yep. Got uh, a, a lot of girls urinating over the uh, what? over the last couple of days. Yeah, just women peeing in public, women peeing in odd places. I got a female bodybuilder video of her getting so uh, stressed out as trying to lift this barbell that she peed all over the floor while she was doing Stop it. Stop it. Yep. That you have video. Yeah. Uh, someone sent that in last night. That's a good one. Steve is becoming the king of finding this stuff. I got other popular websites that are lifting stuff off of Foundry and then putting it up. I mean, not that I have any claim on it because people just email it to me, but yeah, it it's becomes just lost in that whole yeah, web of tell existence. Them, Fred, who, who. Yeah, exactly. I don't have any claim on them, but I see them, you know, landing on other sites, you know, within 48 hours of them hitting uh hitting that. And I got a clip of uh, someone saying it's Lucy Lawless, but I don't know because the face is clipped out. I guess she was drunk. Whoever, whichever actress it is, was drunk, stumbling out of a club and didn't quite like being harassed by paparazzi when it happened. Got so irritated that she dropped trow before she got into the car, pissed all over the sidewalk. And you just see her like grabbing it and like throwing it sort of out from from her pants. Like a monkey. <laughs> yeah, like a monkey. Wow, that's a yeah. good one. Not sure who it is, but it is apparently some some celebrity. They're saying it's Lucy Lawless. All right, it's all up on foundrymusic.com. Indeed. F-O-U-N-D-R-Y music.com. It never ceases to amaze me the miracle that is the Internet. It is truly a miracle of art. It is probably the single greatest advancement of man uh, in the last, I would say, 50 years. Since, no, since since the airplane. I would think. The internet. Right. Airplane, internet. What's next? Because it's just... <laughs> Polio <laughs> vaccination. No, fuck, no, all that. No. fuck, fuck all that, that shit. Polio. You walk with a hunch a little. What's wrong with that? You need those braces. You're fine. The internet? <laughs> Anything you want to see. <laughs> that solves that. That's yeah, it. one of your shoes is a little bigger. <laughs> right. <laughs> Anyways, let's anyway. get back to the yeah. internet. The internet. Ever, let me see. Let me see her piss herself, the bodybuilder. All right, the bodybuilder is attempting going to. Up. Is this the uh, clean and jerk? Uh, uh, where's the pee? No, it's, it's uh, there. It's there. It's, it's there. there. Yeah, I got to get a little closer to see it. But yeah, it's tough I'll, I'll see it from our angle. I, uh, no, you know what it is? Because you see the puddle forming. Oh, underneath. right. Okay. Oh, I see the oh, puddle. Cool. That's pretty cool. You know why it's great, the internet? It's not like this shit was even around, but you just couldn't get it. This shit wasn't even around. Like, when years ago could you get a film of uh, that? Well, it has to be the combination then of the internet and the camcorder. Right. The advent of the camcorder and, and the availability of so many people. Uh, video on the phones now and everything. Yeah, because uh, anything that happens is videotaped right. It now. used to be back in the day when no one would help as you were losing your life. They'd just stand around and watch it and retell it in a bar. Now they can right. actually break out right. a camera, film it, and not help. Film it <laughs> and not help and then and then show it to people. It ends up on the Internet. Oh, yeah. Well, it's going to get even better, like you said, because the, the video phones, uh, the, the camera phones are getting much better. Yeah. The video phones, whatever. It's getting much better. Everything, mm -hmm. you, you, I took a bunch of, I think it's going up on uh, one of the websites. I'll make sure. 
I think it's going up on the uh, Anthony uh, Radio's Anthony website. <laughs> it's uh, I, I, at the uh, electronics convention thing. The signing we did yeah, last Friday. That we went to. I was taking video with my phone, but all I would do is hold the phone up to people, and they would think I was trying to snap a picture of them. So I got a bunch of video of people smiling, just standing still, looking real stupid. <laughs> and great. then at the end, I go, it's video, idiot. And they go, oh, oh, and they're all embarrassed. But it's just them standing there smiling, <laughs> like for a picture. That's got to be Very really cool. creepy. <laughs> we do that. That's all I do now is take pictures of people and uh, take video and let them think it's pictures. It's like the Burger King mascot. Yeah. They just sit there with, with that creepy face. Don't smile on their that face. Now, how did they not that see move? that? We were watching the football game. Uh, on on a Sunday, you know, you know the Burger King mascot thing that uh -huh. they've broken out. I mean, he intercepts the ball for a touchdown. It's funny, but that commercial where he's that dude is got the chainsaw and cutting down the tree in the middle of fucking woods. He's by himself, and the tree goes down, and then that Burger King guy is yeah. just standing there, <laughs> smiling, <laughs> not saying anything. I mean, the huh? natural reaction. Ah! <laughs> Saw his fucking head off. Take him in. Take you got the head. weapon right in your hand. I know, right? Oh, you're going to get a chick witch from this guy and then do yeah. the little log thing out on the lake? I don't, that think, whole I don't campaign. think you're hoping for a burger at that point. Yeah. That whole ad campaign is creepy. The, I think that one of the first ones they did was the guy waking up. And the Burger King is laying in bed with him, just like hovering oh, yeah. over, just staring at him. Yeah. Do you imagine opening your eyes to that? <laughs> <laughs> and now there's another one where the guy opens his curtains, and he's right outside the window, just staring through at him. Someone had to come up with this shit. I guess it How works that as far burgers? as advertising goes. But does it? How does that sell burgers? That's scaring the it's crap out of a lot of people. Yeah, it's name recognition market uh, placement. And, and it gets people talking about it and thinking about it, because it is just the creepiest guy. Oh, and it's just an uncomfortable, like, three, four seconds. Seconds close up with that <laughs> fucking thing's big head, <laughs> like it knows the horror that's about ready to happen to you, and it's getting ready to enjoy it. I guess it. And by the way, have a whopper. <laughs> <laughs> have this before you die. <laughs> exactly. It is really uh, creepy. Yeah, I'm just waiting for some power tool to come out of this and drill to the head like a bad '80s slasher movie. <laughs> just drilling to the side of your head. <laughs> All right, let's go to John. we got to back up again on the program. John? Hey, what's up, boys? Hey, John. I was down in Belmont trying to trying to get an assault on the meter in on a live one, but it wasn't working out. So the guy, one of the reporters, I think it was Channel 7, was taking uh, interviews of people with blood stories. So I started making up this thing. I said, well, yeah, you know, um, my friend Jimmy and his friend Steve are in their hybrid car, and it broke down on them. So this guy, Greg and Tony, went in their boat to go try to uh, help them out. You guys there? Yeah, we're listening. Okay, sorry, sorry. We're good listeners, Hold actually, that. believe it or not. <laughs> so, uh, I said, yeah, Greg and Tony went to go try to help out uh, little Jimmy and, and Steve out of their car. And then after that, this other guy we know, uh, Ben, who owned the, owned the farm, Ben Todd, was in the water also. So we had to get him out all, out of there also. The guy's sitting there taking it. Films the, you know, takes the whole uh, the thing, and one of the other reporters comes over to him later on and goes, uh, yeah, that was for Opie and Anthony. So they never wound up showing it out, though. So. But, I, you know, it's, it's not a true assault for the media, but... The guys want to try stuff like that to try to get the names in and stuff. Well, we get a lot of uh, we get a lot of people calling in saying they tried an assault on the media and it wasn't a live shot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that's got to be very uncomfortable when the reporter turns and goes, "Look, idiot, we're, we were taped, taped this. you jackass." Well, that's why. That's why I never said anything like you know, Opie and Anthony or X or anything like that. I just wanted to have a little fun with them and see if they would actually air it. Yeah, that's, um, that's, that's actually a good idea. Uh, little Billy, happy birthday! All right, thanks, John. Thank you. Okay, we'll go to break with Silence of the Lambs, the musical. We haven't played this in a while. Put the fucking lotion in the basket. My favorite track. One of our favorite things on the program. All right, we have Bill Burr helping us out today. He's got a gig coming up. What, tomorrow or Thursday? Yeah, I'm on that uh, that 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 uh, Montreal Comedy Festival, the uh, Monster Comedy event. I'm going to be playing here in New York City, uh, Irving Plaza, Wednesday night. You can go to uh, ha 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 dot com. Or uh, I got the information up on MySpace and uh, BillBird.com. BillBird.com, very I'll good. I'll be doing Boston and Providence and Portland. You and, also have uh, a Michigan. really funny CD. You should tell people. Oh, they yeah, can... Emotionally Unavailable. It's a very funny CD, and you can get that at BillBird.com as well. All right, we got uh, so much more to do today. We got the Rocky story. We got, uh, Anthony, we got the bird flu teases coming in finally. Oh, very, very scary. It's all about the bird flu. The bird flu. That's the latest fear that uh, the news stations are throwing at us. And uh, some guy from, uh, where is he from? Texas. 
He's got some bird flu teases that he sent into the program. Looking mm -hmm. for other people to do this because your local news is all over this, right? Yeah. They're all talking about the bird flu. Uh, this is my favorite one. It's coming up. Um, about Thanksgiving. Right. Oh, yes. But, uh, but first. Oh, I, but you mean a tie in? A bird oh, flu tie in? Of course you got a tie in. Oh, we'll get to that in a birds. second. We'll get to that in a second. But first, uh, the audio isn't great because this guy decided to just hold a mic up to the TV. <laughs> Where, uh, <laughs> what? Well, you know. He's trying. Mr. Microphone. He's trying. He's trying. He's trying. Okay. Blue that kills in just weeks, and it's only a plane ride away. I am concerned about avian flu. Concerned? Find out why some Houston doctors are scared sick. Today at 5 on Local 2 News. God, I love this stuff Concerned. more than anything. Did it's you hear the beginning of it? It's just a plane ride away. <laughs> right, you did hear that. Okay. Yeah, you can take a plane anywhere in the world. <laughs> that means we're gonna we can get the Congo fever if you freaking go over to the Congo. Well, because a lot of experts are on CNN and Fox saying, well, this bird flu, it's somewhere else. Yeah, it's scary, but it's somewhere else. They've had their first cases in Europe. Right. So they're very frightened now that it's going to come here. But then, of course, the news people go, well, yeah, it's over there, but. But. It's so if a bird a gets on a fucking plane. Right. Look out. Comes over here and rapes a pigeon. <laughs> then and it's we're still, all it, it shouldn't the, it's, it's still within the bird community. Yeah, you there's can, a, a slight outside chance that it could transfer over to humans, right? Right. You can get it from a bird. If it's, it, I think it's mostly people that work around or are around a lot of birds. Do you know like how you get it from a bird? Around. How? I don't know. I'm asking. Do you it's, know? It's airborne, so it's somehow, you know, maybe uh, they fly around, they cough in your face. You ever have a bird cough out on you? <laughs> I don't know. Their shit maybe drives up, flakes off, you breathe in some, some of the mist. I have yeah, no they're, idea. They're in the air, they're in the trees. I mean, how, how the fuck yeah. are they going to get you? Right. First of all, there's no other kinds of birds anymore. Remember as a kid, I used to see everything, you know, Orioles, Blue Jays, Cardinals. Now it's, it's all... Pigeons and seagulls. <laughs> it's like they fucking took out every other bird out there. I can't remember the last time I saw maybe a crow. Every once in a while you get a crow. Yeah, you get a big black crow. Survival or of the fittest, my yeah. friend. And I bet you there were all sorts of humans around at one point, and now it's just it's just us. Well, you get yeah. well, well, you do you do gig elsewhere. You do go around the country. I'll say, but you probably don't see much outside of a hotel room and the club, right? Yeah, but I mean, I drive down the highway. Where are they? Yeah. Nothing. Where yeah, are no, they? Yeah, Nebraska. You see some. Uh, They're right. Oh, what the fuck they are? Those things that fly in a V. I've seen geese? blue jays and robin redbreasts and cardinals right in my backyard. But you also see home invaders too. That's sir. I also see the home. Well, I didn't see them, unfortunately. They would have to taste my cold steel to break into my house. Rapier in hand. Jesus I'll Christ, show him. Look em. at this. I told him to go out and get me some hauls. I figured he'd get me the little five, five pack. He gets yeah. me the whole. Like I have AIDS here. He's got, he the got whole, a thousand cough drops. Thirty-three percent more hauls. <laughs> I, <laughs> I got that. like five hundred in here. Uh, let's say hi to Jen. She knows how you get hi. the bird flow. Go ahead, Jen. Hi. I just work as a vet tech, and what happens is you are around birds. You're usually poor, and you live with them, and their shit gets flaked off. Turn into dust, and you breathe it in. So it is. It's from shit dust, huh? Yep. So even if a bird shit. took a dump near you, as long as you didn't hang around until it dried out in the sun, you'd be fine. It takes a lot of bird shit. So there's really no story here, then. And the reality is, it's very hard to catch this thing. The isn't biggest it? thing that they're the the fears that they're getting. Ooh, they just showed a home invasion map of, of Long Island. The big fear thing that they're they're doing is if it mutates and is able to be transferred between humans, that's when you'd have this huge problem. God. But uh, as far as it just being a bird thing right now, it's people that work in the business. If you work at a turkey farm and uh, you're around shit all day, you're shoveling the turkey shit, that eh, could be a problem. The turkey tees just moments away. Oh, yeah. But first, we have another one from this Houston uh, TV station. A deadly flu already killing people across the world. Houston's doctors preparing to fight it. Is your family at risk? Today at 5 on Local 2 News. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that guy is scary, huh? <laughs> Houston area doctors ready to fight it. I love the local in a world. Yeah, In, in a, a world. world with the bird flu. The bird flu. An innocent piece of bird shit could be death. 
<laughs> they thought they were buying a parakeet. <laughs> Let's say hi to Bill in Buffalo. Bill? Hey, I know how you contract that disease. The chicken fuckers are getting them. The chicken fuckers? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> fuck the chicken. Yeah, <coughs> yeah. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> Du Hühnerficker. Ja, irre. Ich bin ganz wild auf diese Hühner. Er ist Ja. Ja. Ah, nun wird's gut. Ja, gleich. Ja. <laughs> it sounds like the chicken's crying. That's you know chicken that? fucker. <laughs> you can tell right when he fucks the chicken. The chicken's just going. Muck, 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 muck. <laughs> what the hell is it? That is a German fucking a chicken. That is a guy Exclusive actually having audio. sex with a chicken. This is what satellite radio is all about, Bill. Burr. Right. That wow. is one of your people. <laughs> That's right. Wait, hey, just, hold, wait a minute. What? I got a little of that German in you me. You got a little German in you? A little bit, a little You're bit. Nazis. Yeah, but at this point, it's like, dude, I'm from Massachusetts. Yeah. You know what I mean? What are you, Irish? No. I'm I got not. I got to hear that again because you, you hear the chicken actually crying. On. <laughs> It's, uh, you can tell there's a little foreplay. I guess they're getting the chicken. Right. It's a guy and a girl. I don't know. And I... then they're getting the chicken. And you can hear the chicken's just making chicken noises. Uh. And then right when he jams it in, uh, it turns uh, into a different sound. I love the music. Du Hühnerficker. Ja, irre. Ich bin ganz wild auf diese Hände. There it is. Ja. Ja. No, that's a rape. Ah, nun wird's gut. Ja, gleich. A house of horror. Jesus. Orange. Oh. How that did it not so claw bad. his balls off with the... You gotta know how to fuck a chicken, Bill. Yeah, there's... You don't just let the claws hit you. You gotta read chicken fucking for dummies. They're talons. Sharp talons. We better keep this. This yeah, is some keep good that. audio. Like that chicken fucker audio. All right. Uh, all right, here's the... No, that wasn't audio of me at the doctor last month. <laughs> <laughs> Bastard. Who was that? That was really funny on the replay, by the way. Really funny. <laughs> <laughs> all right, here we go. The... Bird flu news tease. Health and government officials are bracing for the possible spread of the avian flu. Experts fear the bird virus could mutate to a contagious form that could kill humans. Right now, the drug Tamiflu is the only thing doctors say may fight the disease, but you've got to catch it first. Humans, we have no immunity to this virus. We've never seen it before, and our bodies don't know how to defend us against it. 
Only the Swiss company Roche makes Tamiflu. Senator Chuck Schumer wants to increase production by forcing Roche to license other drug companies to make it. The U.N. has already made the request. So far, though, Roche has refused. In the meantime, the bird flu has people across the nation uh -oh. worried. With uh -oh. Thanksgiving coming up, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention is getting a lot of calls asking if it's okay to eat turkey. The CDC says it is perfectly safe to eat it, as well as other poultry. You just have to cook it properly, and that's because of the age-old worry of diseases such as salmonella. They had to throw that music in there. And by the way, I saw this. They teased it all night long that yeah. uh, is your turkey safe this uh, holiday season. So and then it was the a nice story by the end. That there are people calling up asking if it's safe to eat turkey. They they should absolutely get those people's names and addresses and go by and and kill them. And, give and them the shoot flow. them. Because they're... Uh, the idiots that they get. You know what's it's funny, too, is they'll eat a turkey sandwich, too, not even make the connection. It just has to be like that brown bird with yeah, the legs yeah. and stuffing coming Big out bird. of it. Is it safe? Is my turkey safe? I don't want to get the bird flu <laughs> from eating a drumstick. Of course it's safe. It's, they have no idea how you get it, where it comes from. No one even has this fucking bird flu. And is it my turkey... I have giblets gravy. Is that like an antidote? <laughs> so I'll be safe. <laughs> Let's go to Paul on Long Island. Paul. Yeah, you fucked up my thing. Can the bird flu be your Thanksgiving turkey? Yeah, well, all the news stations, they'll still do that tease. You watch uh, as we get closer. Those cocksuckers. All right, St uh, we're going to, yeah, we're going to Steve. Steve, what's up? Hey, hi guys, how's it going? Hey. Um, uh, you guys have got to find a listener who speaks German to translate that video, because I've got to know what they're saying. Yeah, what are they saying? All right. That's an attractive chicken. Yes, I'm going to fuck it. <laughs> yeah, we can play Boo Got Shot. Yeah, you We'll like stop that. the audio and then have a German person. Uh... You like that, you little chicken whore. <laughs> uh, let me slap those feathers off chicken your ass. Whore. <laughs> oh, wow, there's some uh, action sequence. Pulling someone out of a flaming car. That's got to be... Uh, oh, that guy's whole stomach got burnt. Where is that? Where is that? It's on today's show. Okay. Hey, what's up, uh, Craig? We're easily distracted. Hey, over there. How you guys doing? Colorful all right. Pinwheel. What's up? Hey, listen, over here in New Jersey, we got a shitload of problems with these geese dropping crap all over the ball field where the kids play and all. Yeah. So I don't know what they're going to do if these uh, geese get infected with this flu because, I mean, the epidemic of uh, bird crap out there is unbelievable, you know? Yeah, you should kill them first. Yeah, Take you got to you, you got to kill the uh, geese. The birds you know. have been crapping forever, so why now? Why now is it uh, a scary thing? You ever walk through those fields where the geese have been sitting for ever for the whole season? It's just nothing but uh bird shit everywhere. Crab meadow. Yeah, but they share like, meadow golf course. They shit like scary. spinach. It's like is grass. It like, it's not even like shit. These are like tubes. Look at that, tubes like of spinach. Tubes and it's white Cabbage. and uh, green. Yeah. And then it dries up, and uh, there you go, bird flu. All right, here we go. Uh, the latest bird flu thing. It's in Greece. Bird flu has landed in Europe. Yeah. Greek officials this yeah. morning are waiting for lab reports to see if the virus is the deadly H5N1 strain. That virus was confirmed last week in Turkey and Romania. Starting in Asia, the virus has been carried by migratory birds all the way to Siberia, west across Russia, and then south to Turkey and Romania. On a scale of six, the World Health Organization has set a pandemic alert level at three. Uh, which means that there is a new influenza subtype that's capable of infecting humans. Attempting to halt the infection, Romania exterminated thousands of birds. Villages were quarantined and the surrounding area disinfected. Poland and Germany shut down poultry markets and the European Union banned all live bird imports. Farmers here in Britain are being urged to put their poultry indoors and migrating birds will be put under surveillance right across Europe. Scientists are also worried about where the virus is heading. Migrating birds will soon be flying to Africa, a continent not prepared to contain the disease. Mm -hmm. Nothing's going to happen with this. No. no. This is mm -hmm. this is the killer bees all over again. Right. Where's the killer bees? Where are they? I heard they were coming from um, South America. I was a little kid, and the killer bees were coming. Remember the killer bees? They're they? going to come up here in swarms and just kill everybody. Where are, yeah. where are the killer bees? And uh, all through the uh, late 70s and uh, early 80s, you they were kind of plotting their course. They're in Mexico. 
Look out. Here they come. They're going to cross the border. A couple have been spotted in Texas. That means a whole swarm is coming. Eh, nothing. Nothing. I want to see the killer bees. No. We're not going to see the killer bees. We right? got nothing. Derek on Long Island? Yeah, hey, how you doing? Hey, what's up? Uh, yeah, I'm, a, I'm an emergency room doctor in the Bronx. I just want to confirm you guys uh, believe that this is all bullshit, this bird flu stuff. Yes. Yeah, they uh, confirming. Get flu from a bird. The, the bird flu and the regular person flu kind of mutates and then becomes the regular flu. It happens every year. You're going to get the flu from somebody else that has the flu. So bird shit, eating birds, all that other stuff is going to make a difference. So it's not going to kill millions of people? Well, if it becomes a flu epidemic, it's only going to kill like really old people and really young people who the flu usually yeah. kills anyway. And uh, hopefully stupid people, too. Oh, well, yeah. I'd like to see a flu that just kills stupid people. <laughs> That's a that's a mutation I would love to see. Nah, it's not going to mutate like that. It's not going to mutate so it only no. kills stupid people. All right, thanks, Derek. Thanks, guys. Let's uh, go to Mr. Hughes. Mr. Hughes. Good morning, Opie. Good morning, Anthony. How are huh? you? I am well, and I hope you are too. I was stationed over in West Germany back from '88 to '90, and uh, while well, one night we were getting drunk and we watched that movie. It's called Barnyard Fun. And uh, what that German fella is actually saying in the in the beginning of the audio clip that you played here recently is uh, something about the chicken and I want to fuck it. <laughs> and then uh, towards the end of the audio where he says, ja und, and gleich, uh, he says, it's, it's translated to yes and fair or good. Uh, and anyway, that's it out of me, man. Punching out. Yeah. Some, someone says uh, she basically calls him a chicken fucker <laughs> and asks if he likes the chicken. <laughs> Are you enjoying the chicken? It's great. I like how that guy translated ya. Yeah. Like yeah. Ya, yeah. Yeah, uh, yes. yes. That would be yes. I, I think uh, I don't think he knows German. I'm calling Bravo Sierra. Yeah, a little Bravo Sierra. John, Arizona, what's up? Hey, I'm calling y'all out, man. You guys are wrong. We got killer bees in Arizona, and uh, I think Texas and New Mexico, too. And what are they doing? Uh, just chilling. They uh, Are they you know, chilling just, or are they killing? No, nah, they're just, just chilling. It hasn't got to that point yet, I guess. I mean, I, I ain't no scientist. It's been but 30 yeah, years. They yeah. Said, they said they were slowly making their way into America. What happened? Last time you heard somebody get stung to death down there. That's right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. If you're going to name these things killer bees, they should be doing some killing. Nothing. But we get nothing from the killer bees. Absolutely nothing. I tell you what, nothing. I'm going to go out. I'm going to go poke me a couple nests today, all right? All right. Thank you, sir. Uh, I uh, like how he just he called us out and then was proven wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I'll call you guys out. They're here, and they're not killing anybody. <laughs> right. So there you go. They're here, and they're just kind of flying get, around. Get your facts straight. Right. They're making honey. Uh, <laughs> no, they... The news made uh, the killer bees sound like they had, uh, you know, minds of their own, and they were highly intelligent, and their and whole job easily, was easily to irritated. Kill you. Yeah, right. Th their whole job was just to kill you. Uh, Brandon from uh, the Gulf of Mexico, he uh, pointed this out. We didn't hear this, I guess. The guy that said he was a doctor before on the phone talking about the bird flu. He goes, "A doctor saying." And then quotes, regular person flu. <laughs> was, did the doctor guy say that? Did the guy say he was a doctor on that call? call yeah, it was, the he, regular talk, was person he trying to talk flu? down at our level or was that guy a hoax? <laughs> That's the regular person flu. Look, man, you know, we have the microphones in front of us, so we're the experts. And then if you call in a radio mm. show, you must know something about that subject. Right. That's just how it works. Yep. So that guy was a doctor. Yeah. Regular person, flow. <laughs> regular person, flow. listening to Opie and Anthony as he's treating people. Right, <laughs> listening to the audio of somebody fucking a chicken. All right, we got uh, <laughs> we got one of the <laughs> yeah, good. We got one of the big stories of the day right here. Yeah. Dust off the gloves, drop and do twenty. Oh. Rocky Balboa is back. Sylvester Stallone is returning to the role that made him famous. He will write, direct, and star in the sixth Rocky movie, simply titled Rocky Balboa. 
The first Rocky, released in 1976, won three Oscars, beating out All the President's Men and Taxi Driver for Best Picture. Stallone has not been the most loved actor of his generation, but that movie was adored. But there's one big twist in this Rocky. Hey, Rocky's loving and supportive wife, Adrian, is dead. Rocky is a widow, though actress Talia Shire may make it appear in the flashback. So at 59 years old, will Rocky be able to go three rounds in the ring without breaking a hip? Not to worry, says Stallone. You're never too old to climb a mountain if that's your desire. When you reach a certain age, people become skeptical about right. what you can do. So you may not have the skill, but you've got the will. And will audiences have the will to sit through a sixth sequel? If it makes $100 million, then the answer is yes, we need another Rocky movie. Oh, boy. It will. It, it, it would make a hundred million without a problem. He's gonna be training on a colostomy bag. <laughs> the speed bag the yeah, you gotta hit the bag for a little while. <laughs> He's sixty. He's sixty fucking years He's old. He's sixty not. when the yeah filming Rocky Six. Yeah. Adrian's not coming back because she's she's dead. I just picture him, like, uh, the close-up on his face, pulling away as he's going, like, yeah, we, yeah, ah, and they, they pull out, and he's getting uh, a colonoscopy, <laughs> like, as they're snaking that pipe up his ass. <laughs> yeah. It's all punch drunk, shaking like Ali. <laughs> <laughs> he's 60. Yeah, he should have turned Rocky into, a, like, a superhero or something. You can't. And recast Rocky and just continue that way. Just recast Rocky. There's a million little stories you could do. With the original Rocky. How guy. about recast Rocky and do it as a prequel where it's like Rocky before the first Rocky. There you go. Where yeah, he's like doing the Godfather the Part 2. There you right. Go. Kind of show how he got to the point where, you know, he was even boxing at all. There you I go. don't know That's... anything but a 60-year-old Sylvester Stallone in the ring. It's not even like he takes on a younger boxer or anything and, and it shows him the ropes. It's Rocky, Sylvester Stallone, 60, in the ring. In the ring. Oh, boy. Looks like he's a not getting... A young Burgess Meredith, only 69. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like he's not getting any uh, work in Hollywood. No, and you know it's just going to be bad, like, old jokes. They're going to tell old people jokes, like, because he's got to overcome that. So there's going to be people saying that. And and then the dead uh, Adrian part is going to be the, you know, the heart-tugging you know, tissue moment. You know, it, it, People say I can't do it no more. He's gonna be by the gravesite. You know, people say I can't do it no more, but you were always the one that told me I could do it. And now I'm gonna get back. I'm gonna do it, brother. I will fight for you and Mickey. Bad catchphrases. Yeah. What a bad terrorist. Catchphrases. <laughs> Praise to Allah! Go for it. Go for it. Rocky Six. Here, yeah, the movie. Uh, what do you got, Steve? Just yeah. say it. Oh, okay. Uh, they printed the um the script in uh, in his magazines in that Sly magazine. They printed oh, yeah? most of the uh, the Rocky Six script, and he fights a young black fighter. Goes out to Vegas and fights a. Uh, oh, stop that's what's so it. hilarious about white people. We only beat him in the movies. You ever notice that? Yeah. In real life, they oh, just kick yeah. the shit out of us for the movies. Whitey in the ring is always the bleeder. He's just bleeding in the first ten seconds of the fight, and the whole rest of the fight is, I don't know, that cut over his eye could pose a problem. The doctor's always got to look at it. They're always ready to just cancel it <laughs> until he gets his ass knocked out. Black guy looks like he's barely got a sweat on him. He's... <laughs> I know, right? He's talking shit. He's doing the latest P. Diddy dance as he beats the shit out of you. That was that was the worst thing about, uh, what's his face? Who's the dude there? He keeps getting knocked out. The middleweight champion. I'm getting, uh, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, oh, no, what's his name? Uh, Come on. <laughs> I don't know. I don't Roy know Jones Jr. Oh, okay. Roy uh, Jones Jr. would beat the shit out of well, you. Well, they're trying to get and him. He, he would entertain the crowd at the same time. They're trying to get him for Rocky Six. Roy Jones Jr. So, you so. Oh my God, is this the real script? Yes. Yep. He's fighting some. Is it a younger black dude or? Yeah, yeah. it's a younger black. Dude. Did they mention his sixty-year-old ball bag spilling out of the side <laughs> of his American flag shorts? <laughs> <laughs> Old Turkish taffy testes. Hey, Mick, he stepped on my balls. <laughs> hey. Uh, I got dignity, kid. 
This is part of the strict. How about you look into your, yourself? Y A S E L F. That's how they spell it, yourself in the script. You know, there was this old champ, and he was going to defend against this young, real tough challenger, you know. So the fight went down, and the old champ, this poor guy, he looked like he, real t he took a real beating, you know. So after the fight, the new champ felt bad about whipping the old champ, but the old champ said, don't worry about it. It's only right, because the real fighter, the real champ, should go out the way he came in. It's the champions do. Ah. Oh. P U. So he wants to go out like a champ. That's going to be the sound in the in the theater. The amount of people are going to show up to see that movie. You don't think America, the American public, will go in droves to see this? Yeah, they'll see. I this. think this will be a huge hit. It'll have a huge It'll opening be, weekend. It, it will. It, and that's the, who's going to with the baby boomers. Yeah, I remember when I saw Rocky for the first time. Rocky Balboa. I was blowing this fat guy from Arkansas. Mason Dixon. <laughs> that's the guy's... Yeah, uh, that's that's going to be the name of the fighter? That's the black Mason guy's name. That's Mason the fighter he They're trying to get Roy Jones Jr. to play that part. Oh, my God. He can't lose again. <laughs> he's got to fight at some <laughs> now point. Now he's going to lose to a 60-year-old Rocky. <laughs> oh, you know the shit he's going to get <laughs> in the ring before every real fight? Yeah. Hey, dude. Six-year-old white guy uh, beat you up. Come on, Babu. Well, good luck to uh, Sly. Should they be exciting. Talia Shire might make an appearance for a flashback. Probably a flashback on a deathbed. How probably. do they do that? It's going to be her on the deathbed. Oh, it'll be like an older, very good deathbed It's going to be on the scene. deathbed, big dramatic scene, and that's going to make him, you know, have to do what he's got to do. I when thought she was going to be knocking, uh, like, uh, dishes and stuff off of the uh, oh, nice. cabinet. Sure. And he's going to go, what, are you going to kill me? Kill me, kill me. Be a killer like your father. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when was Rocky Five made? Fifteen years ago. Fifteen, 15 years. years ago. And are that one me? actually... It's been 15 years I was, in between movies? I was, yeah, what was it was 90-something. I was just about a senior in high school. So, yeah, it was Aww. maybe yeah, 15 years ago. Jeez. But I got in front of me here. Wow. Yeah, 1990. Wow, Steve, very good. It only made forty million Rocky Five fifteen years ago. Yeah, but that was. Yeah. Uh, also, what does it cost to make a Rocky movie? You don't have a whole lot of special effects. No, nah, it's got to so, cost a lot. You, you got to pay Rocky though. This one's going to be a lot Stallone's, of special effects. Stallone's yeah. probably probably taking a pay cut because he's probably involved in producing his, it. His head computerly generated onto somebody who's actually you know, maybe exactly fifty two. It's going to be like Spider Man, all just complete CGI. Uh, Sylvester uh, Stallone. You know, it's going to be a George Lucas film. You know, what's going to be horrible is like his. Sort of in shape, well, with like muscles, with like skin losing the elasticity. <laughs> the old guy in shape. Oh yeah, yeah. Was that? Was it the juicer guy? <laughs> oh yeah. Tells his name Jack Lalane. Yeah, Jack Lalane. Old guy in shape. Maybe he'll just get in the ring in a big like black jumpsuit, like Jack Lalane wears, <laughs> right up to his <laughs> jawline and down yeah. to his toes, like everything's covered completely. Yeah, I've he... been in shape since 1938. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's been wearing the uh, Arthur Fonzarelli mechanic suit. <laughs> yeah, the whole time. <laughs> Since he was like 32. You never see any of Jack Lane except for his face and his hands. That's all you see. Some people suggesting they bring back Tommy Morrison for the film. <laughs> <laughs> Is uh, he still around? Uh, yeah, he's uh, he's in bad shape, actually. Uh, Vanilla Thunder from Philly. You, Jesus Christ, you don't understand how many Philly morons are going to show up for Rocky Balboa? Uh, for, show up for this. Rocky Balboa was voted Philly's favorite athlete by the Daily News. It's so hilarious. Yeah, that's, that's the funniest thing about them. Like, they score a touchdown at Eagles game. Sometimes they play that Rocky thing. Yeah. yeah. I was giving them shit when I. This actually on my CD. I'm like, the whole pride of your city is based on a guy who doesn't exist. Do you realize that? Yeah. Do they have a Do they have a statue down there of Joe Frazier? Uh, no. That's pathetic. And they got one of fucking Rocky? Yeah, they got a Rocky statue, but not Joe Frazier, who is from Philly. Who's a legitimate, who actually, like, fucking died in the ring and then came back to life? Right. And beat up Ali a few times in his life. Oh, oh. That's one of the greatest knockouts ever. Yep. Is he going to make a speech, like, uh, a great speech like he did when he uh, fought Drago? If I can change, and you can change, we all can change. Remember that? Like he turned the Russian people around. Rocky! Rocky! They all started Rocky. chanting Rocky like that could ever, ever, ever have happened. Like they all went and got shipped to Siberia at the end of the yeah. fight. Yeah, exactly. You to, know... To relive the bitch wars. <laughs> <laughs> if we can change, if I can change, we can all change. And speaking of changing... 
Let me tell you about your pants on your garment, people. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, old people need dignity too, people. Like it'll be if old people can do it kind of thing. The listeners will not let the killer bee thing go. No, got to back up a little bit. We'll 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 get back to the rocky thing in a second here. But first, Mike in Texas. Mike. Yeah. The killer bees are what? Yeah, we had a exterminator out here last year right. that died from getting stung by a bunch of them. All right, so an exterminator has died from the killer bees. Yeah, out here in Texas, and they said, we, as a matter of fact, there was an article in our paper about them last Sunday, and they said that they've had, there's been a couple of horses. They're not any more. All right, so a couple of horses and a guy here and there. That's yeah, not the epidemic yeah. they promised us. We, I want to see the killer bees. Well, they say their venom's not any more stronger than a regular honeybee, and you can't tell the difference unless you test them, but they're a whole lot more aggressive. More aggressive. There's no yeah, stories on this. There, there's I'll, nothing going on with the killer bees. Sir. I know. I mean, once a year, probably somebody chokes to death at uh, Wendy's. Well, I was going to say, there's a lot of people that die from vending machines just collapsing on them. Did you know well, that? We, we've got them real bad out here this year. Because we've had a lot more rain than usual, and I don't know where these things are coming from, but I work in the oil field, and we've had a bunch of them out around our tank batteries and stuff like that. Are you scared of the killer bees? Well, I don't want to get stung by them. Any kind of vibration or noise upset them. A friend of mine was weed-eating here a while back, and that weed-eater upset a hive that he didn't know was there, and they attacked him. And he a friend was of mine was weed-eating once, <laughs> yeah. and a bee came up, and they don't like the vibrations. Bobby, stay away from the weed-whacker. <laughs> but there's lawnmowers and stuff like that. Anything that makes uh, a lot of noise upsets uh, them. Doggone it. I, I don't As know. As opposed to what, the easygoing wasp? <laughs> yeah, right, 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 right. Throw a rock at their hive. See how they like that vibration. As a kid, yeah. that was probably some of the most exciting uh, exciting things you could do was uh, messing with a wasp nest. Oh, yeah. Go bomb you a You and your buddies could find on sa some Saturday afternoon, would go find like a wasp's nest. You'd come across it in the woods. What's that? Oh, dude, it's a wasp nest. And then it was just how can we destroy this thing and not die? And you'd you know, throw rocks at it, and they would just swarm and start, you could start oh, yeah. running. They would swarm chase and chase you. And make themselves look like an arrow pointing at you. Right. <laughs> and and, and half of them, all, all, only half would look like the arrow, because half had to be the bow. Oh, that's and, right. And it would <laughs> back and shoot at you. And the very tip would be uh, one of the stingers, and they would go <laughs> into your butt, only your butt. I forgot about that. You're yeah, right. Yeah, as you ran. I was a little wrong. And the stinger was on the nose, as opposed right, to... Right, on the nose of them, for some reason. I'm still not buying the killer bee thing. I'm sorry. No, I'm not either. Let's go to Max in Dallas. Max? Hey, what's up, boys? Hey. I heard the original script for the new Rocky movie, Rocky walks in and Talia Shire's laying on her face on the carpet with one shoe <laughs> off and a vacuum cleaner running. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Out. Then he goes outside and finds his boxing gloves and his American shorts in the dumpster. Watch <laughs> now, boys. Oh, about Balboa is going to be the name of the movie. <laughs> about Schmidt, one of the best comedies ever made. You ever see that one? About Schmidt with uh, Nicholson? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, when he walks home and his wife is dead. <laughs> with one shoe off. And she's just, it was. <laughs> the vacuum cleaner still going. It was the perfect walk home and your wife's dead. <laughs> right. She Like the vacuum's going. She's laying on her face. And one of her shoes are just slightly off. And it's just. And he walks in and just like finds all it like she that. wanted to do is keep the house tight. Uh, that's vacuum. all she wanted in her life. Oh, How does that always happen with the shoe though? The shoe like I noticed that whenever any like four more people are beating the crap out of you, like one of your shoes always comes off. It's unreal. Yeah. All the hits are like on your torso and your head area. But them shoes, no matter how tight you tie them, they're just flying yeah. off. You get hit by a car, they they come flying off. And you know, I heard he came right out of his shoes, right out of them. All right, we got a guy on the line. His name's Sean, and Danny wrote. Drunk dude won't stop calling. Hey, right. Sean, this, this could Yo, be good. Hello, fellas. What's up? You've been calling all morning. What's going on? Ah, right, man, what the fuck? Um, dude, it is so hard to play the O and A drinking game with you guys at fucking eight in the morning. Like that, that this, this is ridiculous. I forgot. People play the O and A drinking game on a regular basis. Yeah, there's, dude. there's things that we do on the show, little crutches and stuff, and that's your cue to drink. You know. There's a whole list of uh, mm -hmm. things you do. I, I forget where the list is. It might be on, uh, might be on Whack Bag or something. Oh, and now you do an impression. You fucking, uh, 
I'm, I'm not even sure anymore now. <laughs> yeah. So we had to go to the diner and uh, harass the dude until he gave us a 12-pack because it was too early to sell booze. Fuck that guy is what I say. Where are you calling from? Jersey. Uh, uh. Wayne. Oh, uh, all right, Wayne, New Jersey. Right on. This guy's so drunk he doesn't even know. Jersey? No, what? Jersey, where was that? Dude, come on. Are you guys, have you guys been drinking all night? Uh, yeah, we, were, we started drinking early, uh, and then <laughs> now it's uh, Later. early again. All right. Uh, uh, yeah, come on, man. Uh, don't be harsh on me. Fucking Tommy Morrison died of AIDS. 93.3 impressions. <laughs> I don't know. Did, I don't think Tommy Morrison died yet, right? No. Yeah, he's dead. Is he? Is he? Yeah. Anyone? He went to prison and died. I have no idea. I don't know about that. All right, Sean. Good luck to you. Hey, oh, I I, I love you, guy. You know, you, you are. You know, he's the drunk you, guy. You, you're right. one of those good guys that you know. Uh, like to put my hand on your shoulder. Say, say hey, fella. You know. Uh, say hey, fella. Come on over here. I, I love you, man. You you you're, you're all right. All right. Hey, uh, by the way, Tommy Morrison, he's alive, he's healthy, and yes, he's still one tough son no. of a bitch. No way. That's right. Oh. That's right. Tommy Morrison. Danny Bonnet. Get this your Danny back shaking, straight. You've shaken my entire existence it's to the Danny Bonaducci. All right, Sean. Thank you. I love you. All right. Uh, Sean from <laughs> Washington, D.C. Hey, uh, how about when the Russian premier stood up? The guy that looked like uh, Gorbachev. Oh yeah. Uh, with the, uh, and, and started to do the slow clap after Rocky's speech. Remember that? He stood up. Oh no. And he does like this slow clap, and the whole place just comes apart at the seams. We can all get together, because Rocky said and so. And communism comes apart. I must break at the you. Sleeves. Yes. A dumb guy from Philly is the one that makes it happen. But it's a Rocky. Do you think Carl Weathers is somehow trying to get into this one? Yeah, he's dead too, though. I mean, I'm saying in but the movie, flashback. Yeah, flashback. Dies. Yeah, a whole Di flashback movie. But he died. <laughs> he dies as Afro. <laughs> it's a facelift. Yeah, just for the part. Back to the killer bees, Eric. Morning, boys. You want to hey. say that uh, we're downplaying this? Yeah, my father's been an exterminator for over 30 years, and I've been working with him for about 10 years. What the problem is, they do look like a regular honeybee, but there is a pheromone that is released. When one bee stings you, there's a pheromone from that sting that is released that attracts the other bees. It brings out an extreme aggressiveness in these bees. And their only goal, once they start stinging, is to get rid of that threat. All right, that's fine, but where are the big stories about the killer bees? That's there what have been actually... There in the in the U.S. there's been over two dozen people killed from these things, and in South and Central America there are several hundred people. That's killed. nothing. Since when? They they scared us for decades that the killer bees were coming, and you and you're saying well, a couple and, and dozen they, people died. I, I I would think at this point a million people they, what, died. Well, but what what's happening is they're moving slowly throughout the country. There was a recent uh, uh, graphic that was I saw on the internet that was showing Arizona has the biggest problem with them. Uh, Texas and New Mexico are having problems. Here in Colorado, we're starting to get them. And actually, where did the killer bees come from? Mexico? In no, South actually, America. Yeah. South America. Okay, so this is what I loved growing up as a kid when they threw this fear at us that the killer bees were coming to America. Yeah. And they would show the graph like in the year blah blah they're going to be this far and then this right. far. Yeah. Then they're going to be well, into and Texas and then this. But I, as a kid, I was thinking, yeah, but but what's happening to the people that? That they're, you know, in the area they're in right there. now. Yeah, right, well, right then and there. Are a lot of people dying in that area where the killer bees are actually hanging out before they move slowly north? The killer bees, nothing ever happened. No killer bees. They promised us killer bees. They promised us flying cars. We got nothing. What else did they promise us that that didn't happen? Mylar suits. Mylar suits. Jet well, packs. I'll tell you one thing: is that, is exterminators are actually not allowed to kill these. If if they if an exterminator encounter, encounters a hive of these bees, you actually have to call the fire department to take care of them. All right, but it, they have to use the phone. It's not the epidemic they promised us. Yeah, it's 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 worse than what you think it is. They just, they just intentionally. <laughs> and I'm going to say it. no, it's not. Uh, Can't you just well, come up with that, with that? I, I personally think you're wrong. All right, Eric. Thank you. Uh, Carl Weathers. Anything on though. Carl Weathers will come back in a flashback like Chubbs in Happy Gilmore. 
<laughs> uh, I'm sorry. What was that, Bill? I'll say, can't you go up to the hive with that? What's that, that thing they always have in like the old, the old movies? The, oh, uh, yeah, the little dust. The Whoosh. thing they spray Smoke. the insecticide with. Yeah, yeah. The, the old thing. The little handle. It's actually in the Godfather when his little grandson was walking around. There uh, you go. Yeah, and, yeah. And Stop! You're spilling it. Little smoke. Yeah, yeah. That little. Psh, psh, psh. It usually in the cartoons it said DDT on the side and you'd psh, spray a big cloud. Now the end of that, that was did, was I supposed to believe that the 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 pesticide made Marlon Brando have the heart attack? I don't or know. Was running around because I think it was just running around all the excitement. Uh, yeah, and then he sprayed it on him when he was laying there dead. <laughs> oh, that was I like when he starts to go down. He grabs that little uh, little stick that you grow the uh, tomatoes <laughs> yeah, the, on. Yeah, that'll, <laughs> that'll help. That was another good one. That was probably the best death right up to the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Made that sound. <laughs> and then he just grabs the little stick and down he goes, and the kid sprays insecticide on him. I'm surprised uh, Michael didn't have the kid killed for that. I know. Godfather Two, he would have. Yeah, Godfather 2, when he really turned ruthless. He would have taken him out on a little rubber dinghy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At 60, he does look like he's in really good shape. It's kind of scary. Let's say hi to uh, Fonzo. Fonzo, he knows a little bit more about Rocky Six. Go ahead, Fonzo. What's up, Bob? Hey. Yeah, I've read the script in Slide Magazine. They spread it out over like three issues. I'll try to be uh, brief with it. Basically, it's exactly how you said it. opens up in the cemetery with him over Adrian's grave, talking about how much he misses him. Uh, he, he owns a restaurant in Philly. Now, his kid, uh, you remember from Rocky Five, and now some high powered businessman who has no time for his dad. Um, the, his brother in law is still hanging around. And this champion is like a thug rapper um, who he's run out of challengers because there's nobody in the heavyweight division. Then some cable sports channel simulates a fight between this guy, the champion, and Rocky in his prime. And Rocky wins, so it gets a lot of people kind of, you know, in his ear about how he can get back into ah. the ring. And so he goes to, you know, he gets checked out, they give him the approval, and the script in the magazine kind of cuts off when they're about to fight. The other thing is he kind of has a love interest with some fat girl that he knew uh, when she was a kid, whose name is uh, Little Maria. They, you know, they, they describe her as kind of a Cameron Mannheim type. And he takes her kid, who's another, like, street thug, under his wing, and he kind of, you know, teaches them to rub that kind of thing. He hires both of them to work in his restaurant. You know what's going to happen, uh, right? He's going to die in the ring. That's the only way that movie is going to happen. That's what was rumored years ago. I mean, that's how he wanted to finish it. I'm not sure if that's... That's the only the way movie. it would get any buzz if uh, he dies in the ring, ending the Rocky series <laughs> with Rocky Six. Then there'd be a huge buzz. And then people, because they saw the movies in the past, would have to see Six just to get the, the final ending of the series. Right. Yeah. How yeah, old is he in, in the script? Um, I think they've got him in his 50s or something. Um, oh I think they've references to other people having fought pretty, pretty late. And they might even make a George Foreman reference or something like that. George right. Foreman was like 42 or something, you know, it's why he's going to be 60. All right, thank you, sir. Yeah, thanks, man. Watch out. All right, we, we continue, but his phone obviously <laughs> sucks. Let's go to Taylor in Texas. He's got some uh, stats on the Killer Bees. Taylor. Taylor, with a C. Yeah. I'm down here by Hidalgo where the killer bees first crossed the border where it's documented. And there's at least two or three people a year get killed by bees. And they're not sure if they're killer bees or European, but they're just saying that they are killer bees. Can we, and get, can we get some stats? Does, it, yeah, I'll, I'll look it up. I'll see what no, I can I'm just find saying, it. well, two or three people are dying from the killer bees I mean, every it's year. Not big, it's not that big a deal. It's been going on for so long that it's not that big a deal anymore. It's usually an old Mexican on a tractor, you know, that doesn't know what he's doing. There's a lot more people over. dead in that area every year from just crossing the street. You see what yeah, I'm getting yeah. at? This is not I'm the sure, epidemic sure, yeah, they promised exactly. us. Exactly. I mean, you're exactly right. But they are here, and, I mean, they kill someone every year. That's about as bad as it is. All right. Thank you, sir. I love how the old Mexican, he doesn't know what he's doing. He's on a tractor. He's probably just mowing the lawn. Right. He, yeah, he doesn't know what he's doing. He's Mexican. Look, look, look <laughs> it at this guy. no fucking sense. Look at this guy in Texas. Killer bees killed a guy. Oh, okay. Uh, Jim? Yes. And I got a guy in Corpus Christi was mowing his lawn about seven years ago, and they attacked him. His uh, neighbors called 911. Cops came out. She was filming it. Cops came out, got out of the car, looked at it, got back in the car. The guy just died. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're proving our point. Exactly. There's not much going on with the killer bees. Uh, Balls Deep 
from uh, uh, Board Planet. He he keeps saying enough with these script reports. They are all fake, fucking idiots. The real script is not on the internet. Hey, uh, balls deep. This script is in Sylvester Stallone's magazine. You asshole, dipshit. It's in Sylvester Stallone's magazine. It's called Sly Magazine. And it's excerpts from the script that he wrote. It, it, are, you're a, you're an asshole. We never said it was off the internet. But he's emailed like two or three times. It's not the real script. It's not up on the internet. What a tool. Which makes it seem what? He has the real, he has the real script so he can, he can tell? I guess so. Yeah. He just thinks he, he knows everything. You know what? Bum, 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 bum. Ban, ban, <laughs> ban. Balls deep is being banned. You can't ban him. He, he Why not? He can't get every magazine in the mail. Fucking idiots, he calls us. He can't. All you can't, right. You can't ban him. There's a lot of magazines out yeah, there. You Anthony, can't read all of them. Jesus. You can't read <clears throat> all the magazines out there, Anthony. All right. Last chance for balls deep. <laughs> you can, next time, though, banned. What is this that you just handed me? Does I, anybody I, ever get banned? Every time I'm in here, you're going to ban somebody, and Opie goes, Oh, come on. Oh, no. Way no, to wreck the no, bed, Bill. No. Jesus. Oh, did I ruin it? <laughs> yes, thanks. that's the bed. Thanks. So. Jeez, I'm, thanks for being so observant. <laughs> really, I'm a fucking idiot. <laughs> Gee, that was... Uh... Wow. Look at them dying in there. Did I really just expose one? I had no yeah, idea. What the fuck? Our... If I can figure it out, these people at home can't figure that out? I didn't think people could figure it out. I thought our acting was up to par on this one. We were doing a great job of acting the part that I was really adamant about banning him. And <laughs> Way to go, Bill. Way to go. Well, why don't you have somebody give me a list well, I of guess... some of your your top ten little bits here, and I, I want to expose them. I'm I guess... sorry. I'm going to cross that bit yeah, just, off the list. Just scrape that one off that I page. I guess that right bit there. is there finally goes. done. Thanks, yeah. There it is. Just yeah, right. yeah. Just <laughs> erase that. <laughs> Way to be so observant, Jesus. Let me see, uh, Billy Burr. Let me ban him right now. <laughs> Don't worry, because I won't really, because I never do. Uh, see, that's the guy. <laughs> uh, Lonnie from Texas. Uh, hey, oh, yeah, check, uh, go to CorpusChristiCaller.com. You'll read about um, the uh, Killer Bee attack yesterday, uh, put four people in the hospital. All right, can we get hey. some Killer Bee stories, uh, Eric? Go to Google. We'll yeah, get the Killer Bee's uh, story. Find, yeah. find out how many people regular pe people get stung by regular bees and right. die. Right, regular bees and die. Right. But I'm sure the number's much two, higher. A year down here in Corpus and in surrounding areas. So. All right. A lot of punching out. A lot they, of people calling about the killer bees. They're they're trying, but uh, then find out how many people like choke at a Wendy's every exactly. year. Exactly, Joe. Yo, what's up, Joe? Hey, good morning. Hey, you got to check out the star, man. They got Dan Cook eating Charlize Theron's ass. Well, that was on uh, Jay Leno, right? Yeah, yeah. Did you get the picture of it? Uh, no, I have not. Yeah, you got to see the picture in the star. It's funnier now. All right, we'll check that out. Thanks, sir. Okay, bye. All right, why don't we uh, why don't we take a break? All right. Why don't we do a little something, something? Look at this. People uh, emailing in. I thought that, that, oh, that was a bit. I always thought Ant was serious. Oh, my God. Yeah, Bill Burr it. ruined everything for me. Can you read the funny papers to us? Uh, ban this, Bill Burr. This is going to be a huge uh, turning point for you. In my campaign. <laughs> this is going to be a huge turning point. <laughs> Bill Burr is exposing. Oh, bit. Bit. <laughs> bit. <laughs> Hey, you know what I noticed? <laughs> Just ruining everything. <laughs> really? Jeez. Like, like everyone didn't know. Stop being observant, please. Like everybody didn't know. That was that an I've never FDR's administration. How come you never stand up when you give a speech? Hey, well, it's almost like you can't walk anymore. <laughs> it's kind of weird. Uh, he's in a wheelchair. Thanks. Now the country has no confidence and we're going to lose World War II. Way, Way to, to go, go, Bill. Way to go, Bill. Bill Burr in history. <laughs> See, we can start a new no, What I'll start you... with. You know what I noticed? <laughs> right. Hey. Uh, Maybe you can come up with another one of those as we go to break. We'll come back and there's something else you noticed. <laughs> Bill Byrne history. Uh, I've noticed what that shirt that he has on. I swear to God, I saw Michael Landon wear it on a talk show. Really? Nothing. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> 
fucking wheels are coming off, man. This is it. <laughs> Nancy no. in Boston. No. No, we like you, Bill. Stop. Nancy. Hi. How are you guys doing? All Hi. right, Nancy. <laughs> hey, I just want to tell Bill Burr that little Jimmy Norton would have never expected that. <laughs> That's oh, right. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. He would have allowed us to run it into the ground. Punch <sighs> out, guys. Love you. Well, maybe it's time to end that bit. Maybe it ran its course. Who knows? Yeah. That's, it's not my fault. I'm not taking responsibility. I mean, you guys well, should have had some that. sort of briefing. <laughs> you know, you know what? You stick a guy in a chair like this, flying by the seat of his pants. I mean, you guys are living dangerously. You know? So fuck you and your bit. Actually, it's a disease. And I understand this. And I'm not even going to hold you responsible. Oh, yeah. Sorry. It's, it's just, a disease. It's, it's you not blurred my things out like that. And it's a disease. Yeah. Dopamine starts going. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to have dopamine. to play the chicken audio now. Yeah. I mean, my, my uncle... Actually, was beaten to death for exposing something. You know? Oh, so, say? Yeah, yeah. So don't say it's not a disease, it's all right? It's a disease. Cause, cause that shit isn't funny to me. <laughs> I'll fucking email you 22 paragraphs of shit. Explaining why it's a disease. Yeah. Yes. That was a book report. <clears throat> uh, let's say hi to Bill in Pennsylvania. Bill? Good morning, boys. Uh, Long time listener. Love the show. Hey, just wanted to remind you, I guess nobody picked up on it. Uh, the movie Airplane, when a guy walks in to buy a bomb in the airport store, there's a poster, a movie poster of Rocky 35 or something. There's an old man in boxing gloves. Oh, I kind remember that. Story. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's getting Punch. close. He's up to six now. Yeah. Punch All right. me out, boys. Thank you, Bill. All right, enough with the killer bees. Killer bees kill dogs and horses. Killer bees don't make as much honey. Killer bees talk. Bees, 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 bees. We'll find one story well, on killer bees today, though, okay? <laughs> We have to go back to October 11th for the last Killer Bee story. One time there was a guy. <laughs> One time. And he was walking down the street and he was chewing his gum too loud. And they didn't like the vibrations. Dude, I heard about this. Heard, this dude, it's fucking true. They stung his tongue and it swelled up and he suffocated. All right, here it's we go. Truth. Here we go. You Google uh, Killer Bees. Here are some of the headlines. Bucks blanked 5-0 by the Killer Bees. What? The sporting team? Yeah, sorry. Killer bees strike closer to Colorado. Beekeeper hasn't found killer bees here. Ah. That's in Florida. Killer bees found in California. Killer bees rec reclaim first place in Pearl Lake's Co Classic. <laughs> wow, they're talented. <laughs> they really are. <laughs> uh, killer bees confirmed in uh, San Francisco area. Uh oh. Well, they're that far north? Uh, I guess so. It continues, killer bees anxious to open camp today. Ah, maybe those San Francisco ones are just like killer. Not like killer, like kill you. They're just killer bees. Killer bees found near <laughs> Santa Fe. The combination of colors, the black oh, and the yellow. It's killer. It's fierce. Those are fierce <laughs> bees. Killer bees Aggressive. add four more to camp ro uh, roster. Let's see. Killer bees signed Clay Plume. Wow, that's pretty now impressive. Now we are in trouble. Killer Bees lead Classic League. Uh, let's see. Bees stress special teams. And then it, it, it just goes to regular bees and not killer bees. Bees goalie Lindsay signs PTO with Rampage. They have goalies? Yeah, they have goalies and all sorts of stuff. They got a hell of a team. All right. Derek, get us out of here, please. Wave of the future, my friend. So I could just get one of those and it'd be fine? You get one. And then you they have your credit card on record. Uh -huh. And then uh, when you run low on funds for your easy pass, they uh, they uh, put some more in off of your credit card. I don't even think about it. Tolls are nothing but a pain in the ass uh, if there's too many people in a cash lane. And then they tie up uh, the easy pass lane. I like the guys that stay in the, like, the easy pass lane. So at the last minute, they could dive over into the cash lane, but the other people are bumper to bumper, so they can't get in, and they're blocking the easy pass lane because oh. they wanted to... Those people, you, the death, the type of death that they should get, I can't even think No, you know one. what the worst is? Is the Holland Tunnel going into the city is the worst. Oh, yeah. There's a couple of red lights there, and then there's just people, people cutting in. It must have been good, like, at the time when they built it, I guess, and the horns went like, Auga! Auga! <laughs> because, like, like, one little jalopy coming out every ten minutes. We're here in New York City from Jersey. 
you now got goggles and a scarf. <laughs> 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 the mother-in-law's in the rumble seat. <laughs> that's when these roads made sense. Right. You're so right. That's when all and these we're roads. we're the same fucking roads. Times oh, Square. It's Times Square here in the heart of New York City. We're here watching traffic. It's like one car every 23 schedule. 20 minutes going by. That's when it was like, you know, when you had to get out at night and light the lanterns that were your headlights. <laughs> Those roads were built then. No improvements been made. Oh, they make them a little wider. They pave them nicer. It's not cobblestone. But the tunnel is still the yeah. fucking tunnel. It all gets funneled down to that yeah. one lane. It comes out, and it's just a mess. That's really funny. I uh, thought you had to have, like, a like I thought they just charged you, like, a... Uh, some ridiculous fee for that easy pass. No, the easy I, I pass itself, cars. it's like a d- deposit that's nothing. Ah, I, shit, I'll get one of those. And then easy pa- you, it, when, when you blow past the cash line and there's nobody in front of you, especially in Jersey where they got the ones that are full speed mm-hmm. easy pass, it's this lane you get off on and it's just a big thing over the lane and you go through there at 60 miles an hour. You don't even have to stop. And bing, you've paid your toll. And you look over and see the cash line and it's a mile long of just miserable people, you feel right then I and there, I think I actually drove through it. that like three times in one trip because I didn't get it, and I never got a ticket. <laughs> I did that and uh, got a ticket. You got a ticket. It's confusing, get this. yeah. They, it's they, coming. They say, they give you a ticket, and it says pay 35 cents for the toll and a $20 surcharge <laughs> so they can uh, do their paperwork or wh- You know what's the biggest scam outside of Chicago? <laughs> they got these things right as you go into the airport. They know it's a bunch of douchebag tourists like me or whatever or hack comedians coming from bombing at a college <laughs> and you in a, rent a car and you pull up to this toll and it's some like ridiculous like it's like a 95 cent toll who the fuck has 95 oh, cents no. and there's no attendant oh. and you get up there i literally had like 200 dollars in cash on me and i can't pay fucking 95 cents and right as i drive through they take my picture holy shit yeah so then i pull up to budget and i'm you know Saying every word in you know in a curse word, and then they basically show me they have literally a computer printout. This is what you have to do, and I had to have the license plate, the make of the car, what time it it's happened. It's all printed out. They they know what all you this thing, do or else I got to pay like scam. an eighty dollar ticket. Yeah, it's a total scam because people are you know they're flying back to wherever the fuck they're at and they're not gonna get it. And you're right, no one's got ninety five cents. What a brilliant toll! It should be ninety seven. It's cents. it's more. It's like eighty <laughs> cents. It's like eighty cents or eighty five cents. Right as you get off. I would make the toll ninety seven cents and have no attendant and no chance to make change or anything. And you get you're fifty screwed. bucks out of every every dude who does not live in your city every time right. they leave. Or when they wow. come back, you fucking arrest them, you rape them with the plunger, and then you charge them two fifty. Up top, motherfucker. That's what I would do. That's it. That's what I would do if it was my town. <clears throat> well, I just finished my little uh, breakfast. What did you have? Well, I just did some granola. You got everyone hungry because you sent one of the guys out to get your stupid apple cake. They don't have apple cake anymore, Anthony. I'm very disappointed at the Starbucks organization. They seem to have discontinued the apple cake thing. I didn't know it was limited edition. And uh, now they don't have it anymore. They got cute, like, pumpkin stuff now. I don't want pumpkin. They got cookies that look like uh, the fall leaves. <laughs> they do. I don't want that either. <laughs> Nibble on that. I want something cakey. Well, we got one of our guys going to Starbucks for you. He's supposed to be calling. Supposed to be there calling. And uh, I, I, I was then going to list what they have, and I was going to say what I want. Well, you scared everyone because out, out of nowhere you go, hey, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll try out your improv skills, see what you come back with. And I'm like, oh, are you kidding me? But I gave him a good thing, nothing with nuts in it. I hate nutty things. I don't like peanuts or any kind of nuts in anything that's supposed to be cakey or creamy. Like ice cream with nuts in it, you're insane. It's disgusting. Ice cream is so creamy. Hence the name, ice cream. You gotta have a little and crunch. No, sometimes. you don't need crunch in your ice cream, unless it's like Oreo stuff. That stuff's pretty good, but uh, not n- nuts have a flavor that is not conducive to ice cream. Sorry, well, that's it's not. That's too They're bad. not sweet. It's got to be something sweet. No, in there. it takes some of the sweetness away. No, you know why? Why nice. would you take sweetness away? Sweet is good. The peanuts it's have a little, sweet. a little salt in there. Ah. Something with the, uh, the sugar and the salt. It kind of, kind of, it's kind of tasty. No. Yeah. Horrid, disgusting. Nothing peanutty. It's got to be something cakey. I said more, more cake, 
than muffin. If there's muffins there, I don't like like blueberry muffins, bran muffins, corn muffins. No. I want like, I like the chocolate cakey muffin because it's like cake. <laughs> it's not even like a muffin. Oh, You're, you don't like the healthy ones that help you? No, no, no. Have a bowel movement? I, uh, I don't no, bran. No. I like, uh. He likes to splurge on his little apple cake every once in a while. Oh, it's because he has that little whore, uh, chef running around his apartment. That's right. <laughs> that was great yesterday when I walked home. I had to walk in and go, hi, did you hear the guy? Like, I was laughing. Like, did you hear the guys today? Oh, they're a bunch of idiots. Yeah. Oh. Trying to just diffuse the situation. Goes, I before. heard it. Oh, it's fine. Don't you worry. My husband's a cop. She stirred some botulism into your food. No. <laughs> a little raw chicken juice in a syringe. Well, I'm waiting for the guy to call <laughs> so you can pick out your cakey thing. Why isn't he calling? Why isn't he calling? Is he known as the slowest guy is, on the staff? Is he known for being slow? He is really known for being slow guy. Is he? Yeah. Huh. I won't say that to him on the phone because I don't want him spitting on my food. All right. As we uh, wait for him to call... Bill Burr, you're going to be playing like gigs all over the world in the next three Poor days. Bill oh, is yeah. just telling me his itinerary. It's uh, I'm at the University of Washington, not Washington D.C. or anything. Well, he's got to go Tonight. to Washington State. He showed up with luggage today. Yeah, he's that's a, a busy man bag. when you show that's up awesome. for for this show with luggage. Yes, Ben. No, I was just saying it was funny. You don't even know you don't even know that intern's name. That's the funniest. What part. is his name? Emilio. Emilio. It's yeah. Emilio. Yeah. 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 Emilio. yeah. He just kind of fell through the cracks. There was really no impression. Some of these interns, <laughs> you know, like Bill the intern. Bill's great. He made an impression, and that's it. It's, it's lasting. It's not that they fall through the cracks. We've been here a year, and we've had 200 interns, I think. That's true. And yeah. at first, I was trying to keep up with all the names and, and what they do and what college they go to and stuff and try to help them a little bit. But then it just gets to the point. You're just you're just faces. I didn't know these guys' names that are working for us now up until they got hired, really. Before that, when they were just interns, I was like, which one is that? Who? What? And then one day, it just, uh, it just clicked. Like, I think I knew Danny. Yeah. Because it was always, you know, Danny. But that and Than with his name, you know, it's Nathaniel, but nickname? Oh, Nat? No, Than. All right. I've lost interest. I didn't even want <laughs> yeah. to know anymore. Nickname, Yul. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you. And then Travis. I, I don't know. I knew it was a weird name, like from, like, Travis Bickle. Yeah. WKRP. Yeah, something like that. But then I couldn't, I don't know what, what's his name? Right. Emilio's also the one that's waited downstairs one morning with Anthony's breakfast and didn't think to call upstairs. Yeah, because they wouldn't let him in. But he wouldn't call. He had everyone's number. He just didn't think. To... Yeah, he didn't have his ID card, so he sat down there with my breakfast and didn't call or anything to get in the building yeah. until like 7 o'clock and I had to eat on the air. Emilio. Yes, Ann. Uh, Emilio, Hello. Hello, Ann. Yes, what do they have down there? Okay, they have a marble loaf cake, Ooh. a reduced fat oatmeal banana bread, croissant. Are there are there any nuts in that oatmeal banana bread? Um, it's no, a croissant. It is nutless. It is nutless? No, it has, I think he said croissant. No, he said croissant that. after that. Yeah, there is a reduced fat oatmeal banana bread. Okay. And, uh, uh, what else? There is a butter croissant, cheese mm. danish, no. crumb cake. Mm. Starbucks coffee cake, oh. reduced fat blueberry coffee cake, no. um, green apple loaf with hints of ginger. <laughs> Just a hint? Just a hint of ginger. Uh. Pumpkin <laughs> cream cheese muffin. Uh. Tantalize. A chocolate cream cheese muffin. No. A um, banana nut loaf. Yuck. Nuts. A raspberry, a raspberry stone. What is that? Ooh, that sounds good. Raspberry scone? Yeah, that sounds good. It's a, it's a bit on the dry side, but... No. no? I don't like flaky. I like cakey. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any cakey-esque type muffins around? Let me tell you something. I'm going to go with that banana oatmeal. You make a decision. The banana. oatmeal banana bread. bread. It's reduced fat, you know. That is fine by me. <laughs> Do you want a cup of coffee with this? No, no coffee, thank you. Tea? Uh, no, nothing, no beverage. <laughs> okay. Just come back with the purchase, thank you, Emilio. I, and I a CD, because now they're in the CD business. Yeah. Oh, you want a CD, too? You want the new um, Fly in the Family Stone compilation? Ooh. That's right, they got that. What's the latest of the <laughs> other one they're selling? They have a Cheryl Quo Crow Wildflower. Ugh. Yeek. Yikes. All right. And um, George Mc and um, Paul McCartney. Ugh. 
Oh, what is more said? Ugh. And uh, the Rolling Stones, a bigger bang. I hear that's a good one. Great record. All right. And the Tracy Chapman as well. Ugh. All right. All right, Emilio. We'll see you in a little bit. Yeah, I love it. Ten oh six. Mark it down. Let's see how long it takes. Did she, right. Lennis Moore said ever come up with another one? That was she it. Got she all that had rage that out. That jagged little pill, and it was huge, and then fell off the face of the nah, earth. She's uh, back though, and her latest no, record's doing okay. Yeah, but Stop it's it. an acoustic version of Jagged Little Pill. It's just Is all it? those songs acoustic. Same yeah. songs acoustic. Yeah, great. Yeah. Ah, with a good couple new ones in there, just because. <laughs> yeah. What the hell? She's not nearly where she was. She was gigantic. She was pissed. Yeah. Just the that angry, the like... That's like when you write a joke and, you, like, in, in a stand-up act. Once you're not angry about it anymore, you just can't do it. Like, you I lost my cell phone. It. I had a great story about losing it. And then I got a new one. And then I'm trying to be on say, I'm still mad about this problem that's been really? solved. And it's just <laughs> fucking... <laughs> And the you have second, a you're not really angry. I don't know. The crowd just senses it. Wow. And then it just goes, yeah, I lost it this past weekend. I was like halfway through the bit. And it's like a three-minute bit. And when you're halfway through it and oh, you're not no. angry anymore, you just like, it's like, ugh, it's like shoveling wet snow. <laughs> <laughs> you just see people getting up. Ah, I think good time to go to the bathroom. <laughs> this is you, the bathroom comic. You give a great insight to stand up that uh, no other, like I've heard behind the scenes stuff and the way comics feel about their material and how it's presented and bombing or uh, killing and stuff. But you just give this insight to some of the stuff that I've never heard from another comic before. Uh, it's very interesting. Like, I, I couldn't imagine, like, halfway through, and you've lost it. Now you're just you're standing there. You have to finish, you right? you got to finish shoveling wet snow. And your new phone's nicer than the one you lost, so you're happier at this point. Yeah, I just didn't But you're uh, still trying to make believe I you're not. That's a little weird. So, <laughs> so you showed yeah. up today with luggage. Right. Let's move backwards here a little bit. You showed up with mm. luggage. Yeah. And you're going to Seattle, Washington right after the show. Yeah. I, I do that, literally do the gig, and then I take the red eye back. To New York. Yep, because I'm at Irving Plaza. How long are you? Plaza. Plaza. Irving Plaza. How long are you going to be in the state of Washington? Uh, about six hours. Six hours he's going to be there. All the way across there. Wait, you're not even sleeping in Seattle tonight? No. no. Wait a minute. Holy Imagine crap. flying and then six hours later you got to get on and do that. God forsake. See, if you take flight. the one o'clock red eye back, technically that's the next day. So they right, don't, right. They don't, uh, they don't fuck with you. Wow. Um, so you're going to Seattle, but not sleeping there. Coming back mm -hmm. later today, technically. Yep. It and actually be about four in the morning. Four in the morning, tomorrow. late late tonight, <clears throat> early tomorrow morning, and then you got a gig One in New York. Seattle time. Yeah. Then you got a gig tomorrow. Are you showing up York. here for this show? No. no. I think we got Patrice tomorrow. Patrice. Yeah. So then a show in New York tomorrow, which is what? Uh, Irving Plaza. Right. Uh, and then I go, uh, then the next morning, Thursday, I'm here. Okay. And then I get on a plane, I go up to Portland, Maine. Then I'm on this tour bus. Oh, a bus! To Rhode Island, Boston, Albany, then I have to fly to LA for something, and then I come back, I do Buffalo. Then you gotta go cross Buffalo, country. Virginia, and then I'm doing Laugh-a-Palooza. <laughs> oh Saturday. God. Oh, it's just, I don't, you know, you know, sometimes I just see open dates and I take them. And I don't really look at what fucking states. And this is totally my fault. Is this true? Look, I'm looking. It's the same identical itinerary. And it's for Charlie Rocket. What? Not a laugh? I don't get it. He's dead. Yeah, he killed himself. Because he had to... Wow. See, now that was... A... I can't believe I didn't get anything That's a legitimate that. one. Because he admitted... When I bombed with the, uh, the whatever that, the fuck I wasn't I said, listening, he wasn't the, even listening. The, the, I w uh, we were listening this time. I'm amazed because sometimes there's some great lines that, that happen. Charlie Rocket. You don't get the reaction because no one's listening, but we were listening. Dude, he time. had to do that, and then he slit his throat. <laughs> oh, my God. You gosh. did it again. How could, I'm going to filibuster this joke. Yeah, you know what's shame, killing me? Shame, 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 shame. You had, you had the whole, come on, people. <laughs> yeah. I was so crazy. Dude, I was so confident with that joke. I was so confident that that would have gotten some kind of reaction. I'm itching my head. Wow. Don't you understand? See, <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, if you're going down for the third time, that would have been it. Wow. Uh, let's go to Ooh. Alabama. We love Alabama. Yeah, Nola Gay. Jason in Alabama. What's going on, boys? What's up? Well, I wanted to let you know I'm buying an 18-wheeler as we speak that 
with the bumper sticker spell out W-O-W on the back of his trailer. That's very cool. Someone supporting the show. It's very cool. Y'all are blowing up. I just bought my truck uh, about a month ago and started tuning in. So, uh, Bill, you were watching uh, Speed 2? Yeah, on the tour bus. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? That guy... Wow. <laughs> it was really mean. Oh! Oh, your cake is back. Don't open it. I just, <laughs> oh, my God. He opened, opened it. it. Oh, and he just bowed with his hair right it over it. folded oh, shut. Dude, don't eat that and cake. And you opened it. He's got oh. long hair. Wow. He opened up the package, and yeah, then he bowed, fun. and all the lice from his hair fell into oh. your cake. Oh, thank you. That's all he's changed. Came in here with no money today. Ooh, let me say. Num, num, num. Can we have a bite? No. <laughs> no. Ooh. It's banana. And oatmeal, and it's cakey. That's a weird combo. Mm. Can you break? Can I break off a piece? No, I'm all hungry. No one time you had your oatmeal. I break off a piece for me. Nope, because I don't care about germs. Just a little. Just okay. That, no, not that oh. way. Oh. <laughs> 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 oh, disgusting. That really was. <laughs> Come on, do me a solid. No, that corner mm. right there hasn't been touched. Just break it off with your hand and give it to me. I want to enjoy the uh, the goodness. No, there's got to be some goodness in that. It sounds a little dry, actually. Oh. <laughs> you need it some weighs milk. a ton. <laughs> oh, my God. That's one of those items when you bring it up, like, oh, my God, we sold one. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody goes to Starbucks for the pastries. Uh, no one gets that. <laughs> this thing does weigh a ton. So now everyone's calling uh, about Bill Burr and your dates. Just go to BillBurr.com. Cause yeah. Like, oh. When is he playing Boston? When is he playing Buffalo? Because then you do Buffalo... Then I, I, I do, uh, okay, here we go. Irving Plaza in New York, Wednesday the 19th, and then the next day, uh, Thursday the 20th, I'm in, uh, I think it's State Theater in Portland, Maine. Then I'm in a place called Lupo's Friday night, Rhode Island. And then, uh, I'm at the Wilbur Theater in Boston <laughs> on Saturday. <laughs> then I'm at the Egg in Albany. The egg? Oh, yeah. What the hell's the egg? I don't know. It's got to be better than the sphere in Buffalo. Um, then where the fuck am I? And then it just continues. You're yeah, just, and then I, I do a college in Virginia, and then I'm doing Laugh-A-Palooza. And then it just keeps going. So go to BillBird.com. You know, the same itinerary <clears throat> was used by... <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, and welcome to Bombs and Floods Volume 3. Uh, Garbage Dick is saying... Uh, if it makes you feel any better, the bomb was funny. Oh, he liked me. Pat from Munaki. Aunt, I may have invented the car crash, but you perfected it. Flan from Jersey. Congratulations, Aunt. You managed to somehow allow us to actually hear flop sweat over the radio. <laughs> uh, D-Dub from West Virginia. That joke stunk. You should and, have had a uh, reporter standing in front of you as you were delivering that joke with yeah. like wind and shit. I really, I boy, I just thought it would, it had something. Speaking of the car crash, play that. <laughs> now listen to this. I haven't seen you in a while. America's favorite hero is back. Hold on. In an all-new world premiere movie. We gotta find the real killer. the first time we've gone through this. Yeah. Walker, Texas Ranger, Trial by Fire, CBS Tonight. It was slight in the background. I heard it. But it's the exact same car crash. It's from the same sound effect CD. Yeah. Of that car crash. You know what I heard was uh, all the time was the scream we used to use. The uh, woman screaming. The over-the-top lady scream. We, we used it a lot of time as Tom Likas' wife. Right. As he was beating her with a Yule log and throwing her into the fireplace. Allegedly. Oh, Tom Likas. Yeah, I don't even know if it's a legend. I mean, there were a uh, lot of there were reports up in Boston. There were Boston. a lot of news stories about him uh, beating his wife there. after a Christmas party. <laughs> yeah, the st the story that was reported uh, up in the Boston you area. You bitches. Yeah, he really like it's one on one. He really stinks. He does. I do the same show every day. Yeah. Come on, we're gonna tell you how to get chicks. Yeah. Okay, Tom. He uh he uh, apparently uh, there were reports up in Boston that he was at a Christmas party, his wife was a little inebriated, took her home, uh, he was pissed off at her, took her home. They got in some kind of altercation that the police had to be called for, and he had physically thrown her into the fireplace on Christmas Eve <laughs> as they were fighting. 
Come on! Go. Just beat her up and throw her in the fireplace. Merry Christmas! You have to do it. <laughs> you have to take them and stick them in the fireplace. These bitches don't listen. You know what I can't stand about guys like him? He's one of those people, if you agree with him, he'll totally talk with to you. But then if you disagree with him, people come on that show and actually start to make a decent point, And he just yells over them and then hangs up on yeah, them. You know what done. I mean? It's like, dude. If you're going to yep. debate, debate. You know? mm -hmm. That's all I'm saying, Andy. Stop. So we used to play this uh, uh, Christmas music with beating sounds and a woman screaming. <laughs> and it was a very tom like -as Christmas. And uh, the scream, and we used it quite a few times, uh, ends up on everything. Like even now, I'll be watching TV and hear like, oh, oh they hear that scream and go, hey, scream that's, from that's the, the scream we use. <laughs> that's the scream. Hey, uh, Bill was bringing up a good point in the office before the show. We wrote it down, too. Speed 2. Now, I thought Speed 2 was a good movie. Ugh. Never saw it, but I thought it did well. I thought the reviewers liked it. No, no, It was no. believable. No, it was just a... It was a, it was a bomb. It was a bomb? Actually, From caught, the get-go? Yeah, I was on the tour bus oh. on the uh, Monster Comedy event there. I'm really whoring myself out today. I'm you really certainly are. I really am. You That's know, I give a shit. You are in your cape, my friend. Um... They like the. I just saw the end of that movie. Like literally, the boat was heading like towards the island. What was the premise? The whole premise is just like like the first one. We Except I guess it's a boat instead yeah, of a bus. Yeah, you know, you had to keep the bus going like over sixty miles an hour. Yeah. I guess you had to keep the boat going at such and such knots. Knots. But why wouldn't they just knots. jump in the water? Knots. I'm sure they uh, figured that out. You can you can handle it. Middle of the ocean, hypothermia. Oh yeah, what? <laughs> why wouldn't they just jump in the uh, the water? You can't jump off a bus, but you can jump off a boat. Is it w was it the um, passenger boat? Well, it's like one of those big cruise ships. I mean, a cruise just, ship? You like can't jumping. get everybody jumping off a cruise ship. Why not? And then what about they start lowering the lifeboats and they probably blow it up. Like they said, if you everybody anybody tries to get off of the bus, they were going to blow it up even if it's doing you know. Plus, uh, that's okay. like jumping off a brownstone. I mean, those things are way up there. Oh, they're huge. <laughs> Hitting the water like. Uh, <laughs> Some cement. Can't do that. Well, communique came in. What is that location check for Milo? Let's see if it's a location <laughs> check. <laughs> no. Uh huh. Uh huh. Oh, really? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Oh. Mm -hmm. Oh. 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 <coughs> bye bye. Sell. Sell. All right. <clears throat> anyway, speed two. Yeah. So you saw the end of the movie. Yeah, it's like the very end of the movie. So I, you know they're literally heading towards the island. So I figured I got this must be the last six minutes. Before somehow Sandra saves the day. It was right. 45 minutes of the most horrific <laughs> just filmmaking ever fucking made. First of all, they come flying in and they're going right at like an oil tanker. And somehow, uh, 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 who, who's the lead in that? Oh, uh, oh, no, no. Nah, the, the O'Donnell? Chris O'Donnell, is it? Or no, Chris? uh, no. No. The guy from Sleepers. Now, this whole fucking thing is unraveling. You see, God knew, damn it. Wait, 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 wait. No. Uh, I don't know who they are. Wait, here comes Jason Patrick. Right? Yeah, Jason, Jason Patrick. Patrick. Oh, that guy. I was distracted because I went to Rotten Tomatoes. Go back again. Just to regroup here. It got a 4% rating. 96% of the reviewers across America hated Speed 2. Hmm. And one of the reviewers says, if Speed 2 and, let's say, Kissed, a dark comedy about a woman necro necrophile... Were the very last two movies at the video store, I would pick Kissed. Ooh. It got horrendous reviews. But anyway, yes. so it's Jason Patrick. So you figure it's like the end of the movie. Like, you can see the island. Turns out they're heading right towards an oil tanker. And, and I don't know, they, they go underneath and somehow they turn the, uh, the, the things that steer the, the rudder. Boat, the rudders. rudders, yeah. And they basically sideswipe the oil tanker like it's a fucking parked car. <laughs> Sticking all these holes in the side of it. So now you're thinking, okay, everybody's like, everyone has this big, hey, we made it, we the made big it. hug. And then one extra, worst extras ever, like, you know, looking off into the horizon just goes, oh, shit. And then they cut to somebody else. Wait, oh, that wasn't the end of the shit. movie? No, it's not the, it keeps going. Oh, the I thought that oh, was shit take. Yes. But that would have been a great oh. end of the movie. No. Oh. The no, oh, no, this is speed take. too, man. You got to make it bigger. But that right. Looked, that looked pretty intense, and they just got out of danger. The oil rig obviously Dude, remember exploded. speed when they stopped the bus and everyone was fine. It wasn't the end of the movie. That's true. Jason keeps getting up. It's the same shit. Right. Now they're heading towards the fucking island. And we know that because of the extra is with the oh shit. The oh shit. Oh yeah. Take. Oh shit. And they're, they're blowing the horn. That is worse than the buddy movie through the windshield whoa take yes where they're both heading towards something where they jump over something yeah and, and you and hug each other yeah yeah whoa Ugh. 
Oh. Horrendous. Then they start going towards... I mean, dude, at, and then the side swiping of the oil tanker was at least fucking 10 minutes to finally get up to there. <laughs> so I'm thinking, it was such a build-up. You thought it was the end of the movie. Now they're heading towards the fucking island. Still going 15 minutes, people clutching on, water's filling up because they side swiped an oil tanker. Ah. Plows into the beach. Doesn't stop. Keeps going. So the boat now is going through an it's island. It's slicing this an town. island in half. It's going up a street, and the extras, you know, the stuntmen are doing the... Uh, you know, get out of the way, get in the way, get out of the way, fucking jump out of the way. There's like 50 of those fucking shots. People drinking like espressos and, ooh, it's a boat, jumping out of the way of their tables. I love how it's the big burly guys all the time because they got to use the stuntmen whenever yeah. they're doing this thing. Like, like uh, uh, my favorite has always been the car busting through the gate take. And there's just some guy hanging out in front of the gate for some reason. And at the last minute, he jumps out of the way. And it's always this big, burly, stuntman-looking guy. And you br bring up a great point. They always look like they're ready to get out of the way. Like yeah. They never look completely relaxed, whether they're sitting down at a table drinking tea. Yeah, whenever they're sitting at a the table, they're leaned on their forearm, ready to jump up. Because yeah. they know the fucking car's coming. Ready to they're sprint leaning, to action. Their, their legs are, are like uh, they're at the starting line of a race. They're all set up like ready to <laughs> they're sweating. But they're still, <laughs> it's, like, it's like the third take. They yeah. got nicked yeah. by the bumper on the last one. But they're still drinking their cappuccino. Right, right. <laughs> just drinking and then, whoa, out of the way. <laughs> all right, so so it just keeps plowing through this well, fucking island. I want to go with this now. Now I'm gotta, trying to make this quicker than the no, end of the movie because no, it's it's you got to think the island is going to slow the boat down and now it's got to blow up. No, it took at least like 20 blocks. No, it doesn't blow up. It doesn't even tip over. No, but it, it stays, stays there. It stays but totally it, upright. Goes right up the street. Plows but how through is some it keeping houses. the speed going if it's uh if it's cutting through an island? It's a magic of Hollywood, Opie. All right. It just keeps All going. All right. Finally comes to a stop. You're thinking this is the fucking end. Yeah, finally, yeah. No. Roll, roll the credits. But you know what I forgot? Sandra Bullock is on dual connected jet skis with Willem Dafoe, who plays the bad guy. Now Jason Patrick has to go rescue this bitch. Of course. Jumps off down a house as everyone's looking like, what the fuck, you know? He gets, he somehow commandeers a, a speedboat from the black dude from uh, that uh, stripper movie that bombed. I'm oh, so right, with, right. Uh, uh, Showgirls. Showgirls. Okay. The guy with the dreadlocks, right? I think he gets stabbed in Oz or something, right? So he jumps on that thing. Willem Dafoe is now in a fucking plane. This is like 35 minutes into the end of the movie. He's now in a plane with Sandra Bullock going to take off. So he's got to be going at least 80 miles an hour. Yeah. They're cruising in a boat. Jason Patrick, whatever the fuck his name is, takes like a harpoon, shoots the plane. <laughs> Where okay. did he get the harpoon from? I don't know. He's just having to have it on the jet ski. He shoots the plane, right? It goes into the side of it. He holds on, then... Plus, it hits a button for some sort of automatic reel-in mechanism. What is this used for aside from rescuing people from a plane from a jet ski? I have no idea. So now he just holds onto the gun, and he's now in the water, skimming across the water, dragging behind a fucking plane that's taking off. He's not losing his grip. He's definitely squinting his eyes a little. <laughs> and he comes up. He finally gets up onto the plane, right? Yeah. Stands on the side of it, says, hey, what's up, sweetie, to Sandra, and then does the the hacky... Punch Damn. the Willem Dafoe. Right. Grabs her. They jump off. So part of the plane, like, you know, the the, the, the plane the floats on. The pontoons. Yeah. They, it breaks off. On. They have them straddled. His nuts are fully exposed. He <laughs> drops like 90 feet right into the water. Perfect totally plan. fine. They're Perfect fine. Plan. And yeah. they just go along like a little friendly torpedo. Now <laughs> Willem Dafoe's like, fuck, he lost the money. He lost the girl. He looks up. It's the fucking oil tanker again. Ah, uh, remember from hitting it. How long yeah. ago was that in the movie? At least 45 minutes. Now, at this point, you're like, please hit the fucking oil tanker and end it. No. He pulls back on the stick. Is he going to hit it? No. He uh -oh. just goes straight up, straight up, and then he's smiling. Oh, good. Made I, it. I made it. I made it. Turns around. There's like some sort of weather vane or some shit on the boat. He just fucking comes to a dead stop, like impales the plane right on, on this thing, thing and passes out. Now they got to the fucking the chick and the dude. They're hugging. You think it's over. Willem Dafoe wakes up. It's still not over. It's still going. Looks down. There's gas dripping. Finally, his fucking mercilessly, his fucking his plane blows up and then sets off a bunch of explosions in the, the oil tank. tanker. It's at least. It's. I swear to God, it has to be at least forty minutes. You know, I've never seen the end of that movie. I've seen the boat hit the island, and and then I changed the channel because I could swear that was the end of the movie. It's and, and you you watch the whole thing in in dead silence. It's like it's 
I was going on next, and they're like, you're on next. I'm like, I, I have to see the end of this. <laughs> These action so movies bad. at times are so exhausting because it's one stunt after another, after another, after another, and, and you're like, when? Yeah, exactly. When does this end? It's like it Well, fortunately with Speed 2, the character development was so you was know, tremendous right? that I cared about everybody in it. Let's say hi to Joe in Jersey. Joe? Bill Burr. Yes. I want to call you an a-hole right now for ruining Speed 2 for me. I'm going to watch that tonight. <laughs> Ruined the ending. <laughs> you ruined it. I thought he was gonna give me shit for how long it took to tell the end of that fucking story. <laughs> no, the uh, yeah. oh shit take is like Danny Glover saying, "I'm getting too old for this uh, shit." Yeah. Which oh. replaced the 1970s when you needed a laugh, you had an old person give the finger. Oh yeah. Up yours. Yeah. The end yeah. You tell him, Granny. Yeah. The Clint Eastwood orangutan moment. That that made the resurgence though in the uh, late 90s. Um. Having the old person rap. Ugh. When old people, old ladies rap, I swear I just want to. Wasn't that at the end of Wedding Singer? Yeah, yeah, so yeah they the still, Wedding they Singer. They still that, that gag out. Yeah. Oh. Or anytime old white people, like there was another movie where a group of old white people, old stuffy Republican white people, start dancing and singing to rap music. Uh, like they're accepting the the black guy. I, I forgot what it was. It that Eddie Murphy movie or something? I have or, no idea. Was it Bullworth? Oh, that, that that was on TV. I don't the other even day. know. Oh, it was that horrendous maybe Chris thing? Rock. Oh, is that Chris Rock movie where he's got to go in the White House and become something? I don't know what it would. Don't even ask. Just a group of white, old, stuffy white Republicans. Like they like that would ever even get close to happening. They're dancing and singing. Oh. Bullworth hate that with Warren Beatty rapping. I saw him one time. He did a. He, he was accepting an award, and he yeah. he started apologizing for things that was the most egotistical. Really, he, he goes, you know, uh, he apologized for not making more movies. He was an actor, and I'm sorry. I know. Oh, when is the next Warren Beatty project <laughs> coming out? So sorry, I I didn't give you enough of me. That is the most self-centered, yeah. egotistical Ishtar was dribble. Enough. Let's go to yeah, thanks. Let's go to Tyler. He's saying we're forgetting something. Tyler. Yeah. Hey, what's going on, guys? Hey. Um, you forgot the final ending. What's that? Um, they're on the pun cruising towards the oil tanker, and the thing starts to explode, just so falls off and starts to drown because she's all bound up. It's and still not over. Oh, I forgot that. Oh my oh, God, it's wait, not it over. Didn't, it didn't end with the oil tanker exploding. That's he's yeah. right. Sandra and starts to drown, and uh, Jason Patrick has to dive in and do the buddy breathe thing because she's down with chains. Oh, so he's like kissing her, yes, yes. and breathing into her mouth, and and how did he get the chains off of her? Uh, he just slammed her to the top, I, I guess, and the black dude in the boat picked her up. Ah, uh, holy crap! And then it was over. Uh, yeah, I think so. Oh, but they had the, they had the jewels, so everything was okay. Uh huh. Oh, so bad. And then, and then he asked her to marry her. Is that awful? All right. Oh, oh and then see more, when they were chasing the plane, uh, the black dude and his girlfriend just had the, like the worst hackiest lines. Like he was all scared and she was laughing like this was all fun. Really? Chasing this terrorist with this woman held hostage. Yeah, nothing beats the um, throw in the funny line when you would absolutely be petrified for your life. That whole thing. That was a big '80s thing too. We should get uh, audio of Speed 2 for Friday's show. Eek. That scene, definitely. All right. We're going to step aside, take a little break. And it really, I think it, it topped uh, Roadhouse as my, my favorite all-time but awful movie. Road, Wow, it topped that because Roadhouse is still nah, my Road, favorite Roadhouse all-time is, bad movie. Roadhouse is really hard. <laughs> the bouncer circuit. <laughs> it's I just love that. so <laughs> that there's a bouncer circuit. <laughs> Yeah, this guy's coming in. They know his name. They they ship him in from out of town. And everything about Swayze, he's just such a pretty boy, like his tight shirt and his his feathered mullet and his ba his dancer body. He doesn't even oh, have like yeah. a bouncer body. It's a dancer body. <laughs> <laughs> and he's gonna be kicking some ass at yeah, the roadhouse. Yeah, he's like he's like musical tough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, like West Side Story tough. Yeah. Da, 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 da. If, you, if you're gonna have a gang fight and it's all dancing, <laughs> then he's a tough guy. His feathered mullet. Uh, all right, more movie talk after these messages. You're checking out the Opie and Anthony program, BillBird.com. 
He's got a great CD out. He's playing Irving Plaza tomorrow in uh, New York City. Very funny guy. We love him. And he's touring all over the country. Go to BillBurr.com for uh, yeah, click on for it. concert dates. My name Where is going, Ronnie. It's going to be on a Monster Comedy event. Monster Comedy event this is the name of the tour. I'm on with uh, like Gary Gullman's going to be on. Okay. Uh, Ari Spears, uh, a band of Doo Wops are going to be there. And uh, who the hell is this going to be? Nick DePaul is going to be DePaulo? on a couple of them. Yeah, man, it's a real <laughs> strong show. Very good. Okay, yeah, real strong show. Hey, Ron, how are you? Ronnie. Well, I hear the doo wops so i got to stop in. i got to find out what's happening. <laughs> yeah, doo wops I hear that, that's my thing. I hear you got like 20 minutes on doo wop Yeah. stuff. So. Just, uh, just <laughs> roll, I just roll with it. You, you know? roll with it now? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you need any setups? No, just... no. Just, <laughs> you guys follow me. <laughs> All, right. All right. When I start to go into my doo wop stuff, I bring up the moon glows, the penguins. Stay with me on this. <laughs> okay, very good. Because that's the, you know, that's my thing. The chiffons. You know, uh, we got to... I you know, know, we got a big yeah, comedy yeah. thing going, uh, my show against your show, Hair on the Line. Yeah. I hear about this. We're, Absolutely. We're taking it so seriously that we spent absolutely no time on it today. So, uh, <laughs> From what I understand, uh... what I understand, you're going to have three bald guys on your show tomorrow. Oh, is that what's going to happen? Yeah. Wait, they're shaving their heads? They're going to shave their heads. Who? Uh, Hawk, uh, Than, and I think you? Danny. And Danny. Yeah. Hawk, Than, and Danny. Yeah. Shaving their heads. Now what? Shaving their right, heads. Right, if they right, now they, you piqued our interest, Ron. If if uh, if Than gets shut down tonight at a uh -huh. secret location doing stand-up comedy against uh, Harry T. Harry T. Oh, from your show, and Nathaniel yeah. from our show. Yeah, it's both. So, uh, it's so. Than, do you even have any worries about this tonight? Not really. No. Unless uh, Harry tries some dirty tactics. He is going to try dirty tactics. Try He's picking he the judges. Yeah. You guys left the judges up to him. How is he picking the judges? I have no idea. What's his criteria for a judge? He's putting the whole thing together. The only saving uh, grace is he doesn't have any friends to pick from friends. He's got a I lot of family, though. Fix. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah. a fix. Definitely. He has a cell he could turn to. No, there's no fix. I've just been getting comedians from the cell and no, nobody that I know as How personally. would you get them? I went by last night. Uh, uh -huh. Robert Kelly, Kelly helped me a little bit to find some people. Sherrod Small, uh -huh. who I don't have any association with, uh, will be there tomorrow. We used to hang. You and Sherrod? No. Uh, who else is going to be a judge? I'm still uh, finding... I also have... Uh, Robert, Ach, Robert said Ach, he might Ach, come in Ach. also to do it, and I'm still trying to find a third. Yeah. And but, you're going to decide who's funnier. What is the What is the reason behind this, Harry? It's just, you know what, uh, for some reason the guys on, on their staff don't like me. I don't know why, and this is my one way to prove... On who, yeah. who, whose staff? Your staff. They don't like me for some reason. I don't know why. For I, some reason? I don't know I'm why. I'm not a likable guy. Yeah, well, you know what? what? You're, I don't you're, know completely. You're just not likable. I it's don't know what just, it is. It's just... You're not likable. I don't know why, though. It's not I like I either. go out of my way to piss people. I really try to stay no. in my own thing, but for some reason they don't like me, and... This is how, you know... There's Harry, you told me yesterday, you were thinking about, about making this, loser leaves town. If you lose, you would walk out of XM Radio. I was thinking about that. Mm. And, um, I mean, that's... Hi, Fez. Like that it. might have to be <laughs> yeah, That might have to be the way to go. Why don't, we, might have to be the Why way don't we like Harry? Uh, everyone want to step up to the mic and try to figure this out for us? Because we really don't like him. He's if right. Harry leaves, I feel like I've gotten my second golden ticket. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it is, uh, Harry. By the I, way, Harry, also, um, I hear this come up every so often. The, the issue with my change on the desk, yeah. I, never, I never accused you of stealing my change. I just said you're a lying sack of cunt. <laughs> Which means you were a liar. I never said you stole it. I said you probably did, but I never accused you outright of stealing uh, the change from. We desk. did. You guys. Oh, okay. As long as it was covered somewhere, that's what I was getting to. I was actually just going to. And why are we asking him. Ben to get the judges for this gig? No, I was asking him for help because he had more connections, and I also didn't want to pick the judges. And why didn't have you it. just go through his Rolodex? You've done that before. <laughs> just pick out names. Be fair to get a number that I'd already got. Walk in, just... pick out names, throw your number around on matchbooks. Perhaps a judge will call you. But we don't know why we don't like you. <laughs> trying no. to figure it out here live on the show. You, uh, <laughs> I think you presume things. I don't much, really know, you know? why. Uh... You have this presumption that you could. But like, since you were here as an intern for our show, right? Maybe it's, yeah. Then you went over to their show. It was almost as if you had this huge seniority over the whole place that you had 
carte blanche or the all access pass since you had worked in that office, worked in the studio, that once you joined up with them, that you could just, you know, now I could say, hey, Ben's Rolodex, whatever, uh, Anthony's computer, why not? This, no, that, no you know, it wasn't anything. an issue. This is what that happened. Ron and Fez are friends of the show. They go, uh, guys, we need some help. Could you spare somebody? So, obviously, we don't want to wreck our show, so we, we picked the guy that... <laughs> so that's the uh, way you not. helped we, us. We uh, picked the guy Earl that and Harry. was the least important to us. That's that's how it goes, it's Like throwing me a soup bone. <laughs> right. The weakest link. <laughs> well, like, Ron, yeah. Anthony, and I, yes, we'll help you. Were there any dead pets you didn't want anymore? <laughs> so, you know, that's how it goes. Hey, I got a pissy mattress if you guys want to sleep on that until <laughs> yeah. you get your own place. I'll take it. You know that's the reality right. of things. <laughs> we were going to, like, hurt our show to make your show better. So I'm on the phone with Opie, and he's like, oh, yeah, this kid, Harry, he knows you. He's a, he's a go-getter. He's got things oh, moving along. go-getter. Uh, <laughs> Earl is a whole new person, which, by the way, Earl has blown up and shocked all of us. Earl you know? has changed yeah. uh, from the old Earl. Yeah. I can't believe it. I listened to him uh, talking on right. mic, which is something he didn't. It was two seconds, and then he was like, go fuck yourself, and he'd walk <laughs> away. That was Earl's on mic uh, at NEW, and now... He's throwing in stuff. He knows. Right. Uh, he knows. Things. Grabbing music while the yeah. show is going on. Well, yeah. he's made your show a lot blacker than the, uh, yeah, that's <laughs> the old days. Oh really my easy. God! I, I got us here. I was he driving dresses. home the other day. I, I, I was hearing music. Uh, I, I don't know what the hell was happening. <laughs> right. It's I like, just tell you, it was some funkified uh, music. Right. I'm expecting you guys to start growing out some afros. It's just. It's, I mean, it's a rump shaking show. <laughs> we were never a rump shaking show before, but now we are. Uh, Earl always dresses like he's in the Rhythm Nation videos. Right. <laughs> That's really er, good. Earl dre- Bill, here's the thing with Earl. He dresses like there's something going on that the white people don't know about. Like there's yeah. an organization Secret happening. society. Yeah. That right. he belongs to, but no, I just like the color black every day. I, I just have a feeling like within six months, you're going to look out in the streets and there'll be millions of people dressed like Earl. <laughs> dressed just and like Earl. When we got the guns up to our heads, we'll be going, we know Earl! We know Earl! <laughs> But he's doing great for you guys. So at this point, I wanted to say I uh, I told you so. Very proud. What of about Harry? You never told me you told <laughs> well, me so about Harry. Still batting 500. That's yeah. not bad. I mean, come well, on. Well, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> well, wait a minute. When we throw Bob Eatman in, you're batting less than 300. Yeah, but it's uh, still 333. So, geez, I mean, that's right. It's you're still in the major. majors. You know what I mean? 333 is all right. That's all star. That's yeah. all star. That's, that's all star numbers there. So right. what type of setting are we looking at for this? It's going to be uh, tonight at a location that we've tried to keep secret. He, to keep he doesn't, I understand he doesn't want anybody location. to know where they're at because uh, he doesn't want anybody, as he calls them, the whack bag assholes, those fucks from whack bag to show up and ruin the set. Yeah, he oh, really he said that. Like they, yeah. they don't like me and they That's don't want to see me. They don't want to see me succeed. For succeed. Some reason. And, Much um, like I the rest of Al Qaeda, it's all secret location. <laughs> right, right. It's all got to be a secret. We're calling tonight midnight at the <laughs> Oasis. <laughs> All right, well. But we're going, you know, we're doing two sets, and we're going to bring them in tomorrow, and then everyone can hear, you know, on air exactly. Oh, this what won't be on air. Will, will this be resolved, though, tonight? Like, the judges will... No, no, we're doing it tonight. We're bringing it tomorrow. It's going to happen all tomorrow. Off air. Uh, You're trying right. to say that we're playing these tapes on our show tomorrow? No. Are all you right. videotaping this? Or our show. No, we're doing audio. <laughs> so this is going to be audio tape. <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute. This is going to be audio tape. And then the audio tape is going to go before judges? Yeah. Why don't the judges watch your act? Right. Why There's some things that out? can't be captured on audio tape. Look, in radio, we're Mime. all about dragging shit out, but when it's not a good <laughs> bit, you don't drag it out. You get it over with. This is a get it over with bit. This is how they decide the spoken word Grammys. <laughs> right, yeah, right. yeah. Behind the spoken scenes. Word. Uh, last, uh, last night's winners were. Right. <laughs> exactly. You'll find out who won as uh, the credits of the Ron and Fez show are rolling tomorrow. Now, uh, are you a little nervous there, uh, Harry? Because no. you, you have kind of a visual, an audio-visual uh no, I don't actually. I've been doing stand up. Like that's just a myth you guys created. I did one one man oh. show. Now, now I'm a lion sack of cunt. Right. No. <laughs> Mythbusters. It's just yeah. that I've been doing stand up for four years. It, I did one one man show and now I'm labeled like a don't performance call it a artist. one man show. Does that bother the yeah. piss out of me? Yeah, it does. I did a one man show. No, it's not a one man show. It's comedy. You it's have comedy. to have some type of career going before you can call it it's a one man show. Stand up with slides. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Jimmy brought it's that. Stand up with a slide. Jimmy projector. brought that right. to our show. People that hide behind spoken word and one man show. One man show. Don't want to, you know, you know, throw themselves out there as far as comedy goes, and they don't want to be yeah. judged on their. 
comedy. Well, I wasn't that funny because it was a if, one man if show. If you go to a one man show and you leave and did you laugh much? No. But it's okay, man, because yeah, like he was doing his show. own it's thing. Right. Yeah, because it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's a little like, deeper than regular Yeah, it's comedy. deeper. If you didn't laugh or anything, that's fine. But you you should have been left enlightened a little. And I, I saw his one-man show, and it was like somebody who watched Michael Moore and then told you the whole plot of the movie. Really? That's what it, yeah. it was Michael Moore as told by Harry. <laughs> uh, we got a representative from Whackbag. Yeah. Ben's Raw ass. Go ahead. Hey, guys, even if we found out where uh, Harry was going to be performing, we wouldn't even go, because the, the whack baggers want to be entertained. Oh! oh! I'm going up, too, though. Ah, uh, Than <laughs> is, is going. You will be entertained by Than. Then you're hurting your career by being, you know... I mean, being dragged down here? Uh, 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 uh. Oh, you could only Harry. lose. That's the that, problem. There's no winning here. What have you done? You've either beat Harry... And or maintain you the status quo. Right. That's or you get right. your head shaved. You're very Harry, funny. You're, you're, very you're, un, you're unfunny, Harry. <laughs> you're what? unfunny. Well, you don't know that unless you go see him, right? Well, well, well from what I've heard and what I've heard of him on the yeah. radio, he's right. unfunny. Is there some type of judging criteria the judges are going to be given that, that how this is going to be judged? Just who they're just going to go by who's the best stand-up. Who's just, the best stand-up? But is yeah. that based on the most laughs per minute, or is it going to be... Uh, the material, how 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 well it's put together. It's Even if it didn't get a laugh, it's clever, all encompassing, it's all, all encompassing, encompassing. Everything. everything. Is there going to be a <laughs> hand over the head type of thing? No, we're not doing the laugh the, the laughometer. No, you've been doing stand up for four years consistently, yeah. performing like uh in and out. But I mean, I've been doing in it for in and out. But this yes, is going to be the tail of the tape. Yeah, <laughs> but till, let's go to the tail of the tape. You got it. Four years you've been doing stand up. Yeah. You What's the biggest place you played? Uh, let's see. I've done stand up New York a lot. What's the biggest it. money you got? I I did uh like fifty for a road gig once. A friend of mine helped me out with that. Fifty bucks. Fifty. Four years in the business. Fifty. Do you have a pants joke? <laughs> 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 What's the pants joke? I'd love to hear it. Uh, I've done that Come one. Come on. I really don't know. Cause <laughs> let me hear the pants joke. Uh, I'm so no. out of this bit. Well, it's not <laughs> funny. I mean, we even we listened. We we spent what five minutes on this, and the and then we did, went. Eh. In the back room. <laughs> you should know that, Nathaniel. That's why I'm surprised you're still involved. Oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> do you have a pants joke? Yeah, no, I, w I was Let's talking about... Let's do it about, right here, right now. I was do talking your about best. losing weight and yeah. um and how... No, do it as a joke. I am. I'm just, like, That's how you do it? Well, setup. well, it's very natural. Look how yeah, natural it was. <laughs> See, Opie, you didn't even realize. <laughs> I'm talk I was okay. uh, talking about losing weight and how, you know, there's certain things you can do when you lose a little weight. Like, you can wear certain clothes. Like, I couldn't wear sweatpants. Because if you're thin and you wear sweatpants, it always looks like you're playing some kind of sport. You know, but if you're fat and you wear sweatpants, it just looks like you gave up on pants. Not really an appealing look for anyone involved. Yeah, that's the sweatpants joke. Yeah. See, now, did you learn something there? Uh, you not yet. You never fucking do that. <laughs> <laughs> you don't ever just do a bit like, okay, here we go. Here it is. Here comes you asked the joke. For it. it never fucking works. Uh, yeah, I know, but. I told you that the last time. I know, but they keep asking for the joke. You're not learning. Nathaniel, you got a joke? Uh, I do, but I don't think I'll do it right now. <laughs> I'll save it for tonight. Uh, yeah, save it all up for yeah, tonight. Yeah, they let him go with that. But I keep when I watched Seinfeld last night, that joke killed. <laughs> Oh, when George heard, did it. I heard he when was George off, did it. Uh, some Seinfeld. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that was actually on I'm, last night. Though. What, what bit did you rip off? What I'm, bit did you rip off from Seinfeld? Well, George was walking bit. around in sweatpants. Yeah. And so Jerry's going, what are you doing? It looks like you've just given up on life. You've given up, yeah. right? Because yeah. if I'm going to steal, why not steal from the biggest comedian in the world? Okay, it seems like uh, you did. No, I didn't. <laughs> I came up with it on my own. Mm -hmm. All right, so what happens? So let's say Nathaniel wins. What happens? I end up shaving my head, and uh, Fez also uh, has put his hair on the line as well. Is that out of solidarity with him or confidence? In it was his? before I saw the one-man show. <laughs> oh. No. Wait a he, minute. He said, Nathaniel had given this offer. If he shaves his eyebrows, too, Fez doesn't have to shave his head. Hmm. See, and he won't? The, that would be the stand-up move. See, wouldn't the, the bit be if, if he actually beats Nathaniel, then you would shave your head, Fez? That sounds better. Like, why would you... Are you are you turning on me? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I turned on you weeks ago. <laughs> I think like you're in the wiki meeting. I think if he pulls this out and beats Nathaniel, then you shave your head. Why would you be on the same team as Harry? Yeah. 
It happened also long ago. That's the problem. I don't know what happened. <laughs> Let's wow. say hi to John in Iowa. John, what's up? Hey, what's up, guys? Hey. Hey, I don't think it's fair for Harry to shave his head. Why? Because he's just going to cover it with a towel, a fucking Arab. Ah, uh, <laughs> yeah. Is uh, Al Jazeera covering this event uh, in their entertainment section? Does Al Jazeera have an entertainment section? <laughs> yeah, they they do a little Hollywood or Bollywood <laughs> type <laughs> show. <laughs> Bollywood tonight. Bollywood. <laughs> All right, well, this is very exciting. Yeah. Watch him um, go up against the infidel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm psyched. I'd like to thank Opie for removing what little enthusiasm I did have for this. Oh. <laughs> Just because I, there's no point in me it's doing this. It's your night, then. It really is. It really is. They were I calling have, me uh, the destroyer for nothing. Yeah. I have total Do faith. you have a little uh, comedy <laughs> nickname that you're going to be breaking out tonight? The Punisher. <laughs> like Punisher. I'll, uh, I'll work on that. Yeah. Yeah, I got nothing off the top of my head. Fan. All right, that's why I write the stuff ahead of time so I can just. Do hey, it there you go. Yeah. Now uh, your type of act. I know you're. What are you political? No, your political humor. No, I just talk about stuff. Uh, just everyday stuff. Yeah. Everyday stuff. Yeah, clothing. Like anything. <laughs> like clothing. A lot of clothing uh, material. It's apparel. Apparel uh, material. <laughs> it's good stuff. I go into my apparel <laughs> material and then furniture. What do you? What, what next? <laughs> do you just go to departments and stores and figure out an act? <laughs> toys. How about them toys, people? So He's huge in haberdasheries. <laughs> <laughs> but if Harry wins, then you shave your head, Nathaniel? That's correct. And E-Rock? And wow. Danny, too? Wow. Danny. Mm. A lot of pressure, no? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> yeah. It's going to look like Schindler's List here. I know. That's the same as the act. <laughs> I've All right. you. So when do we get a winner? Tomorrow? Tomorrow. After the Ron and After show? the show, yeah. It'll all be settled off the air. It'll all be right. settled on the Ron and I think, show tomorrow. though, we'll, I think we're going to know tomorrow who who won based on the, way the they reaction, feel? how they feel. Yeah. I don't know. These comics, no one's ever heard of them before. No one knows who they are. Yeah. And they're, they're going to hold the fate of right. four heads in their hands. Someone's asking, who called who out? I just got some sort of phone call at home. It certainly wasn't yeah, me it was, anybody it was probably It was me because I, I, I wanted... you were talking smack because they, ever, they other people were bashing uh, yeah, you. And that's no really my only way. He gets no respect. Blah, this is my, blah, blah. my only way to redeem myself and show these guys that I'm not... You know, yeah, because even if you do win, it's all going to change for you. Everyone's going to love you. <laughs> so There'll be no more abuse. You'll be the funniest guy in the world. And Harry, we, we just never got over the fact that you were requesting your own bit. Yeah, that really that just put pants you out. Stuff. He requests the pants bit. <laughs> he, he did a he did a little thing for our show. It was good, but yeah. then he started requesting it from like a cubicle. Out he there. went to a cubicle. Instant feedback me under an assumed name saying, "Why don't you play that bit?" And it was his bit. And we never regrouped How after that. How cheesy! Yeah, it was always no, just a creepiness. No, comeback from that. no there, there was isn't. a creepiness after that. We couldn't get over. Yeah. So. Well, you figured one way. You handed them to us. So uh, <laughs> that's really. I guess it all worked out the best. Ron and Fez are up next on 202, BillBird.com. Thank you, Bill. Yeah. Heading off to Seattle with his luggage, and then yeah. he'll be back, I guess, what, uh, Thursday? You yeah. Don't, you don't I'll even be, know. I'll be back there. Your schedule's yeah. so messed up. Yeah. Fine. BillBird.com wants the comedy event for MySpace. You can check out all the 2,000 cities I'll be in the next five days. All right. Very good. All right. I guess that's it. Good yeah. luck, uh, Ron and Fez. Up Thanks next. For nothing, bro. <laughs> good luck, man. Good luck, Stay bro. Tuned. I think you'll do just fine. Thank you, sir. Ron and Fez up next.